Hi, hello, welcome. So, if you decide to click this video, that means you either had a creepypasta phase or you're still in it right now. And even though you might look back on that phase as being cringe or you might still be cringe right now, <laughs> I don't think liking creepypastas is anything to be ashamed of. Because for as cringy, goofy, or badly written that a lot of these stories are, for every edgy fanfic written by some 14-year-old who just snuck into an R-rated movie that blows up, there's another genuinely entertaining story out there that deserves more credit. And there are a lot of unironically great stories that have been told in this genre, and great people who have narrated and written them. And I would know, because as you can tell by looking at this, I've listened to a lot of these. And that's because, as much as it hurts me to admit this out loud, I had not one, but two separate creepypasta phases. The first one is a little bit more explainable. That was in middle school. And I listened to them because I thought they were real, which terrified me, but also interested me in a sort of morbid curiosity way. And the second one was when I was 20 because, okay, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> I was 20 working in retail at unnamed department store. And let me tell you right now, it sucked. That was the most mind-numbingly boring job I've ever worked in my life. Like, not even just job, that might have been the most mind-numbingly boring thing I've ever devoted, devoted that much time to. But the one silver lining was that because I didn't work the register most days, I could just keep my headphones in and listen to music to pass the time during my six to ten hour shifts. Yeah, it, it sucked. <laughs> I already told you. But eventually I got bored of listening to music just because day in, day out, I was literally just listening to the same albums. Like sometimes this was in this was in 2021 and I listened to mostly hip hop and there was not that much stuff that came out that year that I liked at least. So eventually, after listening to the same albums that came out like two years ago, I got really bored and I was like, dang, I need something else to listen to. I wonder if creepypastas still exist. And to my surprise, they did. And not only did they still exist, but in general, they improved so much since back when I listened to them during the whole wide creepy smile with hyper realistic blood era to the point where some of these like literal internet text posts told me more entertaining and compelling stories than things I'd gone to see in a movie theater or actual books I read. And when I couldn't find anything that lived up to those kind of high standards, not going to be very many things in this tier, but we'll get to that when I actually make the tier list. When I couldn't find things that were that great, I could go back to the old ones I listened to before and either be pleasantly surprised at how well they hold up, or more often, just surprised that 14-year-old me was able to finish these without laughing and genuinely <laughs> went on to believe that some of them were real. J to believe most of them were real, actually. But anyway, that's my intro. Just wanted to give a little context as to who I am, my experience with the genre, and why I'm making this. And now, on to the tears. Starting off with Masterpiece. So, if I put something in Masterpiece, that means after listening to that, I genuinely wanted to give money to the author <laughs> for creating that story. Like, if I put something in Masterpiece, I feel like it's so good, it kind of transcends what I think of when I think of a creepypasta story. And I feel like things that I put in Masterpiece tier should have been an actual book or show or movie or something. And I'm just really impressed that something like that could come out of this genre. Great. Great is... It's really good for a creepypasta. Like, it's not good enough for me to think of it as like, wow, this really could have been a book or movie, but it's still pretty amazing for, like, this genre. So, don't sleep on great. They're still really good stories, but next one is just good. And good stories, they're... I listened to it, and I'm happy I listened to it, but it's not, like, super memorable or thought-provoking or anything. It's just kind of a... It was, like, an entertaining listen, or it was kind of scary, but nothing amazing. Average. If I put something in average, that's honestly most of the things on this list. Probably some of your favorites. Sorry in advance for that, but it's exactly what you would expect when you turn on a creepypasta story. 
Nothing super great, nothing super terrible. But if it is super terrible, it's going in the trash. And the trash is for things that are so poorly written that it made me stop one or multiple times during the story and be like, dog, what am I listening to? And if you've been listening to these for a while, you can probably look at this list and see a few of them down there. It's the ones that are... Like, there's average in the sense that, like, oh, okay, the the monster, the kid scared the monster, it kills the kid. That's that monster usually has, like, a realistic blood and a smile or something like that. That'll go in average. However, when it's, it's like, full of spelling errors and it doesn't make sense plot-wise and there's just many, many other things wrong with it aside from it being generic... That's what takes it down to the trash. What'll land in the trash? We'll see when we get into the tier list, which we're going to do now. It's starting off with this one. Also, a lot of these are going to be kind of irrelevant in the sense that there's the popular creepypasta characters like Ben Drown, Jeff, uh, I, which one is this? Eyeless, what was this guy's name? Jack something? Jack and the Beanstalk? I don't fucking know. Bottom line. There's these, but then there's the other stories that are kind of newer, try to break away from the genre of, ooh, big scary monster with a smile, or big scary monster missing facial features, or random experiment. And these are the ones that I've listened to the most, because that whole retail thing, and also actively looking for better ones, because being realistic, a lot of those ones were kind of bad. But, yeah, let's get started. My friend... No, this isn't my friend. I am addicted to visiting alternate dimensions. I thought this one was good. This one... Wh what I'm going to try to do as well. Sorry for, like, having 20 million intros because I'm unorganized. But I'm going to put the things in the tier that I think they belong. And then I'm going to give you a plot synopsis. So, if you want to listen to the story and don't want me to just spoil it right off the bat... I can tell you if I think it's worth listening to before you decide, okay, maybe I'll keep listening, maybe I'll stop and visit the story, which I suggest you do for a lot of these, and yeah, then I'll give you the rundown. But anyway, this one, I think it's good. Basically, guy goes to his drug dealer, he asks for some pills or acid or something, he goes, nah, bro, I got this new exotic shit. He gives him a pill, he thinks it's taking him on a crazy trip. Really, it straight up transports him to other dimensions and time dilates while he's in them. think it could have been great if it went on longer, but it's pretty short. But for the short time it is, it gives you an interesting story. Habitsville. I'm going to do this as all of the Habitsville stories. Because one, I don't think I've listened to all of them because they're not all titled something something Habitsville, so they're kind of hard to find. And two, they all kind of go to the same way, go the same way with a few exceptions. And for the most part, I think they're great. Habitsville. It's basically, there's a guy, he's a reporter for a news company called the Habitsville Gazette. Local news, and in this town of Habitsville and the area around it, some weird shit goes on, like constantly, and he's often found at the center of it, whether he's actively looking for it or just trying to chill in his house and a demon shows up and forces him to babysit it. A lot of strange things happen in this series. All of them, well, most of them are pretty interesting, and overall, it's all around a great one. Another great one. This, a Nazi's Goatman story. Listen to this. This one's really good. I want to put it here, but I, because of other things I'm looking at when I look back down, I can't do that in good faith. This one's really good. Basically, there's a skinwalker in the woods. I know it's skinwalker overdone concept, but this was one of the first ones I've seen about them, and I think it was really well done. It's about these high schoolers who go on a trip into the woods. They're going to hang out in a cabin with their friends, all have a little party. Little did they know they're on an old Native American burial ground or something. Skinwalker starts following them and stalking them and tries to get them to leave, and it they try to figure out like where the skinwalker is, what it wants, what it's doing, if one of them is a skinwalker. There's a really good scene where they're all in the house. They're like, wait, hold on. I think we're missing somebody. They count. Instead, there's one extra person and the one guy who knows what's going on starts freaking the hell out. This one is great. 
because you are my baby. I saw this. This is the reason why I didn't put this in Masterpiece. This one, absolutely fucking Masterpiece. This, go listen to this right now. Dark Simonium narrated it. He's a great narrator. But, this one is about a forest deity. The mother is a forest spirit deity creature who overlooks these woods. And she has a child who is a completely average human baby. And the entire story is about this normal human baby not being able to live up to the expectations that he believes the mother has set for him as she's a literal creature of myth and he's just a person. And the problems that form in their relationship for this, the problems that form for the forest and the outside world as things go on. This one is great. Listen to it. I think it's a masterpiece. Ben Drowned. Now here is the thing with Ben Drowned. Before I put this where I think it belongs, I just want to... Let, let's just leave him over here so I can talk about this. For the time it came out, in like 2013, 2014, this was a really good one. This was one of the best. But so much stuff has come out since this story that like if I made this tier list in 2015, it would be up here. But so many things have happened, and so many more stories that have come out, that I think it's down to here now. Not because it's bad, but just because there are other things that are better. And because of how much better the other things are, it feels kind of strange to put this up here. Now, could for, for the time it came out, it would be here. But yeah, we're, we're going to do this too. Good old Ben. Still think it's a decent story, though. Basically, Ben drowned. As implied by the title, there's a kid named Ben. He drowns. He haunts a game cartridge. And the story is about a guy who's playing the cartridge for... What, what like Zelda game was it? Majora's Mask. And all the Ben showing up. He looks like this in the story and doing all this creepy shit. And he realizes that Ben drowned. You know what, actually, I, I think I'll put it in good, just because along with the story, there's also, like, a fake video of somebody playing the game that makes it seem like this was a real thing that actually happened, and obviously, we can look at it now and be like, well, this is clearly, like, edited, but one, that's, that's a decent chunk of effort to just go into the story, and two, at the time, I didn't know that was fake. I thought there was an actual haunted game cartridge. If you're listening to this past your phase, you probably did too, and yeah. So, just for the effort they put into this, this is going here. Black Dogs. Now here's the thing. Black Dogs, and some other stories on here, are written by my favorite author ever, Liam Vickers. It sounds weird to say a fucking creepypasta author is my favorite author ever. I will get to this. This guy is gonna get his own entire section. For me talking about him, the stories he's written, and why I like him so much. But for right now, we're just going to leave these be. Let's put this down here. Veraska, though. Yeah. Yeah, you you know. If you listen to Veraska, you know why this is here. If you didn't, I'm going to give you like five seconds before I just... I, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll give you a quick rundown. So, Veraska. It's about... There's a town... There's three kids that live in the town, and there's weird disappearances. They hear these grinding and screaming noises coming from deep in the woods on the side of this mountain. There's implied to be some paranormal shit going on with the disappearances, and the kids are trying to get to the bottom of it over the course of... It spans over the course of, like, their entire childhoods, and in the final act, some of their adult life. Plot twist. It is not some paranormal shit going on. No matter what you think is going on in this story, you will be so fucking shocked when you realize what is actually happening here. Like, you will not be able to predict it, and it is bad. It, like, some awful ass shit is going on in this town, but the story that revolves around it is great. Like, this is, this definitely deserves to be up here. This is the first story, like, I never wanted to listen to the, if a creepypasta was longer than an hour, I just didn't want to listen to it. I'm like, who the fuck listens to a creepypasta that's like an hour long, bro? It's a fucking creepypasta. I don't care. 
This was the first one I gave a try to. This shit is like seven hours long. And I listened to this entire thing in two days. Because it, it is that good. It is that good. It, please, listen to this one. This is This is actually... Like, I think this is one of the best stories, like, internet horror stories ever. Now, what is this? The African Boana Spider. This one, it's... It's just good. It, it, honestly, it's kind of average. Basically, this one, there's a spider that this guy finds in Africa. And he's telling this dude in Britain about it. And they're just talking. They're like, yeah, so this fucking spider does all this crazy shit. It does this. They're like, wow, that's really bad. And he's like, yeah, good thing it isn't in Britain. And then... <laughs> Then the guy's mouth, like, unhinges and the spider crawls out of his mouth and it was the spider talking through him the whole time. And the spider just, like, wreaks havoc on Britain. Pretty dumb plot twist. As a kid, I was like, wow, who could have predicted that? Truly, the, the peak of writing, but it's not. It's just average. You know what isn't average, though? Accounts from a lonely broadcast station. This one. And... I want to put it in great, but there's things like it that are better, so I'm just going to put it in... This is like a high good. Counts from a Lonely Broadcast Station is really good. It's about this... It's pretty obvious by the title. This girl, she is hired at this broadcast station to give broadcast to a paranormal town. Broadcast station is situated in paranormal woods. It's kind of, there's things that kind of fulfill this genre of person in paranormal area and their experiences with the weird shit in them. This is part of that genre. This is part of that genre. I think this one does it better. This still does it pretty well. And so it's going in high good. The Brooding Star, though. Damn, I, I keep like hyping them up when I read them. I'm like, The Brooding Star, like you think I'm going to put it here. No, this one's also good. Like, I like these stories a lot, don't get me wrong, but, like, trying to objectively rate them, like, like, if this was based on just my favorites, a lot more of these would be higher, but I'm trying to take into consideration, like, how much I like them combined with just how actually good they are. And Brooding Star is just good. The first, um, kind of cosmic horror creepypasta that I've listened to, and I liked it a lot. It's about this star creature thing starts shining on earth completely changes earth some um, environment and physiology and this guy and his son trying to survive after the star has essentially mutated earth in its entirety and i think it's it's decent like it's i wouldn't put it in average it's a bit better than that but it's not like anything super special Especially compared to other cosmic horror... Well, actually, as a whole, I think most cosmic horror creepypastas aren't that good. But this one's... It's decent. Burger Entries, though. This is great. This this one... It's similar to this. This is, like... Okay. <laughs> Literally just after I said most cosmic horror ones are mid, I'm remembering Burger Entries is kind of a cosmic horror one, in a way. So, yeah, this is there's a cosmic horror thing that causes these fake fast food restaurants to start appearing on earth people are for some reason they just start thinking these are normal even though it'll literally be like doors to it that like warp space to a room that shouldn't be able to exist with just a fake fast food place in it called like happy burger or whatever the fuck it was called in the story and when you eat the food you start going kind of mad and basically you just keep eating the food until you mutate your head swells and then this brain fly thing comes out of your head and goes to the nest and basically it's using humans as cattle to birth brain flies through this fast food thing it sounds really weird to explain out loud listen to it this one is great what the hell uh Not sure why that happened, but okay. Anyway. Next one. I just... Did, didn't I just talk about why I wasn't doing Black Dogs? 
I forget. If I didn't, Black Dogs, one of my favorite authors ever, Liam Vickers, we'll get to him later. Church in the Woods, though. This story bothered me. Church in the Woods is good. It could have been great. It, it might have even been a masterpiece. But the ending to this completely ruins the whole mood that the story was setting up across the, its entire runtime. And that's why I don't like it. It's... It's about this guy. He goes out into the woods to help this church fix their, like, radio or satellite tower or something. He slowly uncovers that the church is actually a cult, and they are trying to birth what basically the antichrist but the way that this is revealed and the setup and everything okay the setup is really good but the way it's revealed kind of ruins all the tension and stuff and it has a decent ending but it's the ending and the things surrounding it bring it down from here to here bottom line hold let, i'm just gonna move all the liam vickers stuff down and get to that later for sale cheap this one is, uh, it's average, if I'm being honest. For sale cheap, it's about this guy wants to sell his house because he's, he realizes he's in a haunted town where there's these, like, crow children and they trick his daughter into becoming basically a zombie. And the only way to break the curse is to get out of the town, but you can't leave unless someone takes your place. This one's pretty long, and for how long it is, I don't think it's that entertaining, but it's not terrible. It's just not that good. This one has a long title, but I know what this is. It's There are cruel and fearsome things that lurk in the deep or lurk in the ocean or whatever. This one's great. This is... I, I like ocean creepypastas. I like ocean stories. I like the ocean as a whole a lot, so I'm pretty biased, but I thought this one was great, both objectively and in how much I like it. It's about this creature, this, like, kraken thing that's following around this ship, and the crew slowly getting picked off one by one by it. And part of the reason why I like this so much is in this one... The crew is actually pretty smart. The crew of the ship is like, they're not just some dumb idiots like, Hur, Oh no, I dropped my wrench in the water, let me go get it, and then he just gets his arm torn off. Like, it's not that simple. They're really trying to avoid this creature and outsmart it. It's just the creature is also pretty, the creature is smarter than they are. And it's like tricking them, it's luring them, it's doing all this shit. This one is great. I like this a lot. And it lures them all into the water. I think it kills all of them, but the one guy who ends up telling the story in the end and there's a pretty scary scene that i remembered one time while i was out in the ocean just scuba diving where they look down and he's like realizing that there's all these bubbles in the water and the water is just white and he realizes wait a minute the water is not white this is an eye that i'm looking down at and like the way the music cuts out and everything it, it chills man that kind of scared me and it's going in great. I dared my best friend to ruin my life. I, this borderline's on up here too, but this one is just great. Because there's a little, uh, contrivance in it. If you've listened to this, you know what I'm talking about. Like, the, the guy who's going against the other dude, pretty smart, but there's a little part where he just gets, like, a handout. And it doesn't carry him, but it's like, come on, man. But anyway, let me tell you what it's actually about if you have no clue what I'm talking about. Dared my best friend ruin my life. This guy and his friend get into a dare where because they can't really inspire themselves to do better, they're like, okay, we're going to try to ruin each other and we're going to become enemies. And the one guy is doing like these little things like, oh no, I'm going to steal your keys to your car or I'm going to... Say something to get you fired from your job. Ooh, I'm so dastardly. But the other friend who started this dare is an actual fucking psychopath. And he plans all this shit out over the course of, like, years to completely destroy this man. And eventually he's, like, on the run trying to escape from him. And But he won't kill him because also he just wants to ruin him. He can't just get him killed. It's, like, it's wild. And eventually he's able to overcome the dude who's trying to like the actual psychopath, and the story to get there is great. So, it's going in great. 
This one, I saw the dark snowfall in Alaska. This one is... This one is good. I, I would say average, but I like the, the concept of it is pretty interesting. So, instead of there being like a monster that stalks the icy tundras or something like I thought it was going to be, it's... There's a group of cabins in Alaska. They're all there for a getaway. And the snow starts falling. And the snow is this black snow. And when it touches you, it like burns you like acid and starts mutating you into these creatures. And it's this guy trying to survive while keeping his group, while well, some of his group alive and these children. There's a part where the snow gets on him while he's trying to rescue this little girl. And he has to amputate his arm. It's it's explained in like gruesome, brutal detail. No, it's not his arm. It gets on it gets on the side of his face, and he has to cut off a part of his cheek. Yeah, no, that shit was metal. This this one, yeah, it's definitely good. I I don't think it's like groundbreaking enough to go in great, but it's pretty good for what it is. My daughter's hand. Another thing that's good, interesting concept but not groundbreaking enough to go in great. Basically, this guy's daughter's hand gets stuck inside of a wall. Like, she leans against the wall. I don't mean she, like, punches a hole in it. Like, she leans against the wall. Her hand starts merging with the wall, and she can't get it off. And it's just about this guy and his wife and his friends trying to figure out what the fuck happened and how to try to get her out as she's slowly being absorbed into this wall. Pretty interesting concept. But it's not, like, amazing or anything. Speaking of people being absorbed into a wall, but this is written by Liam Vickers, so we're putting it down here for now. Final Confessions of a Deep Sea Diver. Yeah, just talking about how much I love Ocean Ones. This one is good. This one is, like, as good as this. I Also, when I put these here, like, move them around in the tier, that doesn't really mean anything. For the most part, I just want these to be together because they're similar. But anyway, Final Confessions of a Deep Sea Diver. This one's great. It's about a guy. He's tasked with a... He, like, finds wrecks and recovers important things from them, such as bodies, personal belongings, black boxes, all of that. And he has a team with him. As he's doing this, he starts to uncover the existence of some sort of advanced civilization of paranormal entities that live underneath the ocean and it's creepy how it goes about like well not even just that like a lot of just weird shit like there's the advanced civilization there's some creatures that we didn't know exist in the ocean there's perhaps other humans down there studying them that he's not like of the classification level to know about and all these mysteries he's uncovering slowly. It doesn't explain everything fully at the end. But I think it explains enough to be a satisfying ending. Without explaining too much to be like, okay, well I don't care anymore. Which a lot of other stories that we'll get into later. Fail to hit that balance and are put further down the list. Because of how badly they fail at that. This one does a great job and it's going in great. Devil Game, the only ritual pasta I actually kind of like. It's... Hmm. I should, should it be good? Good or great? I'm stuck on this one. Like, let's see. Would I put it in here with these? Would I put it in here with the? Okay, yeah, it's good. Devil Game. It's exactly what it sounds like, as a lot of these are. Uh, the Devil Game, basically, it's a ritual on how to... Not summon the devil, but to speak with him through a mirror. And the guy's explaining all the things that can go wrong, what you need to do so they don't go wrong. And the plot twist, at the end of the story, it, well, at the end of the series of instructions, is that it's the devil himself telling you how to play this and inviting you to do it. And I... Here's the thing about that ending, it's good in the sense that like, oh wow, that's really interesting, like he's speaking through somebody who lost the game, he possessed their body, and now he's like inviting other people to do this, but at the same time, if it's the devil telling you this, 
That means that everything he could have just told you about how to do this ritual and keep yourself safe could just be straight up lies. Like, you could do this exactly as he said, and it can literally just be like a perfect way for him to just steal your soul. With, without like any sort of, like you could do everything right, but it's just the right way to get your soul, so, soul stolen. Which you could say is a clever ending, because it's like, ah, you see, it was a trick the whole time. Or you could say it was an oversight of the author, like, wait, why the fuck would I even try this then? Depends how deeply you think about it and your general outlook. But overall, I think it's good. What is this? Disney animations that need to stay in the vault. I'm, okay, I put this, I made this tier list, by the way, because all the other tier lists were just, like, 18 creepypastas at most, and they're all the really old ones. So I'm using this as all of the Disney creepypastas, and I think as a whole, they are average. <laughs> they're not, like, they're kind of scary in, just because they play on a place that you think of as being safe and fun, like Disneyland, turning into this, like, perverse nightmare experience but when you really look at like the quality of writing the types of monsters the stories being told most of them are mid there's some that i would say to would rise to the level of good the one i use to display disney pass as a whole isn't one of them and there's not enough of them so i could put so i could just be like okay overall they're good because they're not good they're average Next one. Does it hurt when you sleep? This is an average, though. This is great. This one... This is one of the ones that I tell you, like, listen this. Listen this one, or read it, whatever you want to do. Anyway, does it hurt when you sleep? It is about a student at university who witnesses a strange death of somebody. They died on top of a building, and they were covered in a tarp when they were taken down. And they had these weird, like, bulges coming out of their head, it looked like, underneath the tarp. And he's trying to figure out what's going on and why this guy died this way. Also, there's, at one point, a sickness starts going around the campus. He starts preparing and doing certain things so he doesn't have what's happening to them happening to him, because at a point in the story, he realized what's wrong. And bottom line, at the end of the story, it's revealed that it was these fungal spores that got around the campus. They infect humans, cause them to go to a high place and gaze into the sun. And eventually they get like rooted there and they painfully slowly die from dehydration, staring into the sun and mushrooms taking over their body as the mushrooms grow up into the sky, then burst and spread the spores all over the place. And yeah, pretty disturbing, pretty well told in the story, overall, all around great horror story. Does this taste funny to you? Average. This one's pretty dumb. It's these, there's these guys at a carnival, there's all these different vendors that are selling all this different food. They go, hey, let's go to this, this fucking creepy clown one at the edge of the road. Okay, they go there, there's a clown who's who's handing out meat. He says, hey, does this taste funny to you? Turns out it's human meat, and then I think he like killed them and fed, or like turned them into the meat he was selling at the end. It was dumb. Not that good. The dog man of whereverville I, I remember this, I just don't remember the name of the vill village. This one is average. For how long it goes on, the story isn't that great. Basically, there's a werewolf in this town. They're trying to figure out who the werewolf is. At one point, it's either the narrator or the narrator... It's either the narrator finds out he's the werewolf, or the narr... No, the narrator finds out his dad was the werewolf. And he's like, wait, but my dad is dead, so who's the werewolf now? Unless that means... And then, yeah, he, he's the werewolf. It's not that good. But how do you... Liam Vickers' story... Gristers! This one was fucking scary. This is going in great. Okay. Gristers. Well, I don't think it's as well written as some of the things in here. It's definitely not badly written. And this is one of the only creepypastas that throughout either of my phases have has ever actually scared me because i was never really hey it's me from the future um yeah i was kind of lying hard as hell on that one part um other creepypastas 
many of which were far worse written, definitely scared me when I was younger. But what I meant to say was that this is one of the only ones who... I listened to this one three times, and the first and second time... Second time wasn't, like, high school. It still fucking scared me. And then the third time, I was, like, legally an adult. Didn't scare me, but, like, I still found it unsettling. And I think as a concept, this is pretty scary. Unlike 90% of the other stuff on that list. On this list. So, yeah, that's what I meant to say. Peace. This is a fucking horrifying concept. Basically, the Gristers is about... There's these little creatures that exist everywhere. They're no bigger than... Like, some of them are the size of, like, a very big insect, or they can grow up to the size of a full human, or even slightly bigger. And they exist everywhere, and normally... You can't see them unless you are actively looking for them and, like, focus on them. Like, they could be in your room and they just kind of, like, dart around the corners of your peripheral vision. You look, there's nothing there, you're like, okay, whatever, They and it's fine. The main character notices one in his house across the night and, like, hunts it down and then finds it. And he's like, the fuck is that? And then I think he kills it, he goes to sleep, and he's like, okay, whatever, that was fucking weird. But then, because he saw the one, now he can't stop seeing them. Like, because he focused on the one, now he's aware they exist, now he's seeing them all over the place. And they start realizing that he sees them, and now they start, like, attacking him. They don't leave him alone. He finds one other guy who's going through something similar. He's like, hey, maybe we can help each other. The guy stops responding to him, and eventually the Gristers kill him. And just the idea of accidentally looking too far into something that you would be naturally curious about like something knocking over in your own house and being like what was that and then you look see one of these and you're just doomed that scared me a lot and i think overall the story is pretty well written i'm probably not doing it justice with my little short explanation of it you might think it's dumb the way i'm explaining it if you're actually listening to any of these as i say them god speak to you because there's a lot but if you listen to this one i think you'll agree with me and at least put it in good like come on man it's decent so what have i become first trash one that we have this one is so bad this this fucking thing is literally just edgy incel fantasy like it starts out kind of interesting basically this kid has some sort of mental illness or schizophrenia or something where there's voices in his head telling him to do bad things and it starts out like he needs to make sacrifices where he's like painfully killing and torturing these small animals by his house and the voices will laugh then leave him alone for a bit until they tell him to do it again if he refuses they start like screaming inside of his head which hurts him until he goes through with their demands and as he gets older, they become more and more ravenous and want larger prey. It, it escalates from ants on the ground to larger insects like praying mantises to like frogs and mice to cats, eventually harming humans. When it gets to the part where he's harming humans, it is so bad. It's like, I shit you not, there is a scene where he's in college, the voices haven't talked to him in a while, He's just going on a walk through the woods. He's a fucking loser with no friends. I, I wonder if this is self-projecting. But anyway, he goes into the woods. There's this group of guys and two girls that are all, like, at a bonfire. The one guy gets up and is like, Hey, what the fuck are you doing here, man? And he's like, the other guy is like, Yeah, get him, Chad. And she, the, the girl is like, Oh no, what are we gonna do? They have, like, some stereotypical names like Chad and, like, Bradley or something. Anyway, he's like, I, you guys gotta get out of here. The demon's taking over. And then the demon takes over and just, like, rips them to shreds and beats them up. And Chad is like, why? And he's he just, like, laughs at him and, like, rips his head off. It's, And that, that same scene just plays out, like, three times in the story. With buff jock guys try to mess with a little old him. He lets the demon out and kills them. It, it's stupid. I don't like this story. Anyway... 
<laughs> I just realized I, I'm more passionate about how much I hate this than I am with how much I liked some of these with the way I'm explaining it. But anyways, I bury Bush. Average. This, it's kind of a scary concept. These people go hiking. This guy and this girl, they're looking for, the girl likes to forage for stuff. It's like a hobby of hers. The boyfriend's like, okay, whatever, let's go along. She goes to this one bush that looks super interesting to her, and basically all these thorns shoot out and, like, grab her, and it, like, rips her eyes out and, like, absorbs them into these, like, sacks it has on it and sucks out all her blood. The guy gets scared, like, watching this, runs away, and I would put it in good, just because of how, like, disturbingly written it is and how scary it is, if it weren't for the fact that at the end of the story... He notices that there's an eyeball in front of his house, which realizes, and he means like, wow, that means it's looking for more eyes, so that means it's hunted me. And so it's assumed that the eyeberry bush is somewhere in or around his house. But that just made me think of like the eyeberry bush pulling itself out of the ground and like walking around on its roots to get to his house, which is just such a goofy fucking image in my mind. And that, like, it's not even that the ending is super bad, it's just the idea of a fucking bush doing that that drops it down to here like one of the liam vickers stories weston pass has a similar ending but because it's not a bush doing that like it's a creature i would put it up here but the idea of a bush just walking around like it had to walk through the road that's just so goofy i can't well, well weston pass i'm gonna put it in good but we'll get to all those stories later like i said anyway Let's take something from the bottom and switch it up a little bit. Uh, we were wrong about the zombie apocalypse. This one is good. For the time it came out, it was great. Right now, it sinks to good. It was an interesting concept. Basically, the zombies in this version of the zombie apocalypse are actually... They retain their intelligence, but they use their intelligence to spread the infection. The zombies are more like a hive mind than they are people afflicted by a virus. They're just undead corpses walking around. And the story is about a guy who... Zombies find his apartment, he barricades all the doors, and he's like hiding inside. And the zombies are trying to coax him into coming out and explaining to him that his current situation is worse than if he just let them kill him and turn him into a zombie as they are also trying to find ways into his apartment. Eventually they get in. Well, one of them gets in while the other ones are talking to him through the door. He locks himself in the bathroom. They keep talking to him. Eventually, at the end of the story, he agrees with them, opens the door, and it's implied that he dies. Pretty good. My father's final story. I... Mm, I want to... I want to so bad. This one is really, really good. Not as good as these or some other things I'm planning on putting in Masterpiece, but this one is like, again, another borderline. Like, scratch me saying this was a borderline Masterpiece story. This! This is a fucking borderline Masterpiece. It's about this guy, this father, telling his son a story of how... Also, this one's pretty short, so... You, I know I'm, like, shilling a lot of these, like, bro, please go listen, please go listen. But I wouldn't say this if I genuinely didn't think they were underrated and deserve the listens. So, this one. It's about a father who tells his son's stories all the time. Well, his singular son's stories all the time before he goes to bed. One day, he stops telling his son's stories. And his son, he becomes more distant from his son, he becomes more consumed by his work, he's away in his study. He's like, why is my dad doing this? Suddenly, when his dad starts dying of cancer, he calls his son back. His son's like, why does he want to talk to me now? He kind of like, not, not abandoned me, but just ignored me through a bunch of my childhood for no reason. And explains to his son that the reason why he did this was because he made a deal with some sort of demon or occult entity or maybe the devil itself hundreds of years ago that he could tell it was like something million stories it was a fucking lot of stories in exchange for his soul 
or maybe not his soul, maybe it was just his life, I genuinely don't remember. But anyway, the devil agrees, and he goes around as a masterful storyteller, telling all these great stories, spreading good through the world with his stories. And he's like, wow, I can never run out of these. I have like a million of them. You, you know that one episode of Fairly Odd Parents where Timmy gets down to seven wishes and he can make seven wishes with no rules? And he's like, it's okay. I still have like seven wishes left. And he just says that the whole episode. This is what this guy was doing. And so eventually, even though the life of a traveling storyteller is kind of nomadic, he, at one point he settles down with this girl he really likes, has a kid. The devil comes up to him and is like, hey, you, you're you running out of stories, kid. You got like 20 left. He's like, what do you mean you got 20 left? I've been keeping count. And he actually was keeping a good count at this point. He had like 21. He's like, oh no, that, that child is your final story. Or I, I, I don't remember how many stories he had. Bottom line, kid was one of the last stories. He doesn't tell a lot of stories to the kid because he doesn't want to like lose his life and not be able to be there for his kid as he's dying he's like you know what fucking i'm about to die anyway here's my last story and he tells him the story explaining all of this stuff and why he was distant and the devil and everything and he, he feels bad for his dad emotional great not doing it justice by explaining it in this manner as i am with a lot of these should have gone and read it sorry if i spoiled it for you like that next one favor for a favor <laughs> another devil story this one's good. I don't think it's anything amazing, but it's it's pretty good. It's basically, this guy accidentally brings the Antichrist into existence. Well, not accidentally. He's tricked by the devil into bringing the Antichrist into existence. And the devil uses his wife having an affair with this pastor as leverage to get him to kill the pastor and his wife. I think he resurrected? No! Then, the devil took the pastor's wife, and, like, he used his body and, like, wore his body as a suit, so he could have sex with the pastor's wife and bring the Antichrist into existence. Yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. The way the plot twist was written isn't, like, super great, but the concept is cool. Feed the pig. Average. This guy commits suicide. In this world, when you commit suicide, instead of going to hell, you go to this place called the farm, where you were supposed to be able to, like, work off your sin of committing suicide and go to heaven, because a lot of the people who committed suicide didn't deserve hell and God realized this at one point, but for some reason... This demon thing called the pig took over the farm, and now the farm is like a shithole with like monstrosities running around and like all the people there are insane. And the only way to get out is you quote unquote feed the pig, which is you climb into its mouth, let it devour you, and you gotta get to the end of its mouth before it just kills you by like chewing on you. And you get to be reborn back into your body, and it's healed of injuries. It's decent. Like... It's not very good, but it's not so bad I'd put it down here in trash with the incel fantasy story and the other things that are coming up. Speaking of trash things, let's let's fill this section more, because I feel like there's a lot of ones on here that are really fucking bad that I realize how far down I've put them, and they... Let, let's give my boy What Have I Become some company. Rap Rat. This story is incredibly popular. I don't know why. Remember how in the beginning of this, I was talking about how these are just my opinions, and with the exception of a few, you can disagree with me. Fuck you if you disagree with me on this one. This story is so fucking bad. This is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. Like, it's it starts off decent, and then when you get to the plot twist of what this is, it's like, bro, what? Like, that's goofy. So, for those who don't know, Rap Rat. There's this haunted, like, board game or DVD game or something called Rap Rat that apparently came out. And you're supposed to say Rap Rat really fast, and if you fuck up, then it's the other person's turn or something along those lines. The reason why is because Rap Rat is actually a summoning ritual for some ancient, like, Mexican demon called Apparat. 
<laughs> and if you fuck up saying rap rat really fast, you go rap rat, rap rat, rap rat, rap rat, rap rat. You start saying apparat, and then apparat shows up and kills you or something. There's other details to this. I could go back and listen to this entire thing just to pick it apart for this one video. But one, for obvious reasons I don't have time. Two, I guarantee you I would still think it's trash. This is bad. I, I don't like this one. For good reason. Next one. We need another trash one. Let's take, uh... Squidward Suicide. All of the haunted VHS episode, whatever, all of these are pretty bad. They're... they're scary. Well, were scary. Ha <laughs> scary is being really generous. They, they did the same thing the Disney ones did, where they take something that's supposed to be innocent and bring you joy, like Spongebob, like The Simpsons, like, uh, insert childhood show here, and they take it, they pervert it into being a horror thing, but it ends up being, like, at least with the Disney ones, they try to tell an interesting story about, like, ooh, underneath the park there's a, a vault full of, like, all the mascots are based off these real mutants, oh, the the people in the costumes aren't actually people in them, it's like some entities that they hired for some reason. Like, it's silly, but at least it tries to tell you something interesting. This is literally all- every single VHS episode. I'll use this for everyone. It's just... I was watching this episode of my favorite show. Suddenly, the character looked directly at the camera with realistic eyes and said, I'm gonna kill you. Then the next scene, it was a fetus being ripped in half. And I was horrified, and I never watched Spongebob again. That's how every one of those goes, and they're never good. Okay? <laughs> These kind of suck. Next one. My Brother Paul. My Brother Paul is... I'm gonna put it in good no this one i'm gonna put it in average the reason why my brother paul is literally just this story from a third person perspective so it's not edgy in self fantasy anymore because it's not like the main character being like i got to rip chad in half because chad was a bully it's a regular person witnessing somebody who's like this and so Basically, how it goes, this guy was never told about his brother growing up, because his brother is actually some sort of, like, half alien or half demon or something, and is very violent when annoyed. So, one day the brother shows back up and becomes a part of the little brother's life again, and he's chilling, and they're all, like, he likes the older brother a lot at first. And they hang out, they're friends, the parents disapprove but won't tell him why, because they know he won't believe them. Eventually, at the movies, there's this group of bullies who's, like, throwing stuff at the little brother. The little brother's like, oh yeah, I'm used to it. Those guys, they're just kind of, eh, don't worry about it, bro. And he's like, no, I'm gonna go up to them. And he goes up to them and says something that scares the shit out of one of the kids. And he's like, okay, thanks. Like, I didn't know you were like that, dude. He's like, no problem. I don't tolerate people hurting my family. And he's like, okay. And then next thing you know, he, like, took all those kids and was, like, sucking out their souls and internal organs and had them hang in a closet. And it was... The younger brother comes in, is like horrified, and he's like, but I'm protecting you. Why do you not love me? I'm protecting you, just like I protected our family. And then he understands. It's, yeah, decent. Better than this, because it's not, like, glorifying the idea of that, but it's still just this, but from third person, in, essentially. From the body, not from the body, that's the shitty-ass NBA Youngboy album. Well... <laughs> You know what, I'm already gonna end up with a lot of people disagreeing with me from this list alone. I'm not gonna criticize young boy fans in this video. I like some young boy songs, just not from the bayou, okay? Please do not come here and, like, attack me. Anyway, in the bayou, completely average. Not great, not terrible, like, this barely even deserves a rundown. Literally, is just a guy wants to get picked up by his friend to go home, can't, he lives in a swampy area of Louisiana, he has to walk home through this road that is surrounded on both sides by swamp, 
a creature walks through and he has to run from it for a bit and the creature eventually loses him and he walks back home it's like it's average it's just mid it is completely mid this this is a liam vickers story one of okay one of these there's something that looks like this and says scary story that you, you know what i'll just get into that whole thing later let's put this down here i'm just gonna take all the, the <laughs> fucking penis monkey we'll get to him this one that's a good one but Let's just take all the Liam stories that I can find right now and put them down here so I can stop pausing whatever I'm talking about for this. There, there, uh, I think that's all of them. If it's not, we'll get the other ones. Anyway, my yard has been invaded by evil gnomes. This one. I'm gonna, this is average, but it's like, this is like peak average. This is like, it's kind of funny. It, it's goofy, but it's like knowingly goofy. So it's not as annoying as certain things like this, which you're supposed to take seriously. These gnomes invade this guy's house and he has to fight against them. He enlists the help of a fucking like gnome assassin. <laughs> um a witch all this other stuff and they had they gotta fight the gnomes and the gnomes are like a hive mind it's it's weird but it's funny though you know what i'm gonna make jesus what the fuck did i do uh let's put that there okay we need can can you not do that please weird slash joke let's make it purple add below I oh my fucking god mm, okay the, this is average And then this weird slash joke. And this one's going to be purple. And there. Okay. This is going in weird slash joke. And the reason why I'm making a separate category for this is because there are some stories that are just fucking weird that I will get to in a bit. That I cannot just put in like average even with these other things just because of how fucking bizarre these <laughs> stories are. And there are other stories that, you know what, I'll do this one. There's stories that I will admit, these are fucking horrible. Like, they are the worst things I've ever seen written. But they are so bad <laughs> that they like transcend what I think of when I think of a bad story. And they are bad to the point where I genuinely cannot believe, I can't comprehend, wrap my head around the idea that this was written unironically. That someone typed this out, read it over, went, yeah, <laughs> this, this is a banger, this'll get them, and posted it in 100% seriousness. If you don't know what this is, this is Sonic EXE. This is, arguably, the worst creepypasta ever written. It is so bad. It's literally, remember what I was talking about with these with, and then the characters stared directly at the screen, and they had realistic blood. This started that whole, like, trend, this started the fucking meme of that. It's literally just, Sonic grabbed me out of the screen and fucking thrashed me around. <laughs> Sonic showed up to my house and asked for my lunch money. Sonic stared at me with hyper red glowing realistic blood eyes. Like, it's literally just that the entire time. Nothing about this story makes sense. It is all very stupid. It has multiple typos. It's extremely poorly written. But it is so bad that I don't think... Again, I don't think somebody could have written this unironically. Like, this has to be a joke. I refuse to believe this is serious. It's... And on top of that, it's so bad that it's genuinely, like... These are bad and suck because they're bad. This is bad and is, like, entertaining because it's bad. Like, this entertained me as much as some of these just because of how bad it is so 
Uh, it's going to step up into here. Hell's Creek. Hell's Creek is literally incel fantasy, but with now there's a cowboy. <laughs> now he's a cowboy instead. It's better, considerably better written than this. And calling it just incel fantasy, it's that's kind of doing it a disservice. But it's not super good. You know, it's not trash. It's it's okay, but it's not that good. How to survive in hell? I liked this one a lot. I think this is a really interesting concept. It's it's not great. If if I'm being honest, it's not very. It's not very good, but. I like it a lot. I'm putting it here. Let me explain why. How to Survive in Hell is essentially if Hell was a multiplayer survival horror game. It's not explicitly said that. It's not explicitly said like you're now playing a game. It's literally like you wake up in Hell, you're in like a skin sack, you gotta claw your way out, and you gotta quickly find like food and supplies and try to like group up with other survivors it's explaining like all the different areas of hell if you try to escape you end up in this desert where you infinitely walk in one direction just keep losing strength until you turn back around and then it, it's right there again it's like the it, it's fun it's a fun story not great better than average though it's just it's just some good fun for like 30 minutes Hero Brian. Okay, we're talking about Hero Brian, the story that was told. There, there's Hero Brian as like the the entity in Minecraft that supposedly really exists, and there's the creepy pasta written about Hero Brian. The creepy pasta written about Hero Brian is literally. I was walking with my friend in the fog. He went to go mine something. I thought he came back because I saw him coming through the fog. My friend said, okay, I just got to bedrock. But then who was in fog? And it was Hero Brian. Hero Brian like crashes their world or something. It's stupid. This, this story is fucking dumb. But Hero Brian as a concept, I'll admit, that scared me as a kid. I thought it was real. There was one time my game crashed. It was in Minecraft Pocket Edition, and I saw my friend in the fog. I thought it was Hero Brian. We were freaking out. Here's the other Liam Vickers story I couldn't find. Get get the fuck back down there. You too. Anyways, Hypno's Lullaby. Hypno's Lullaby gets an honorary great. Here's why. It would just be average. It would just be average. As a child, which is the group that this is going to scare, like, middle school, middle schoolers, right? This shit is horrifying. I saw this, like, this was one of the first things I saw when I woke up. I had to get on my bus really early. It was, like, 5 a.m. I was eating oatmeal, sitting at my table, completely alone downstairs. It was kind of dark. This accidentally comes on max volume. It's not a story, it's like a little actual lullaby, and it's this creepy ass voice goes, Come little children, come with me, safe and happy you will be, away from home, watch them run, Hypno will show you some fun, and something like that, and it's a story about how it kidnaps you, and lures you into a cave, in the lullaby, this shit was horrifying, as a kid, so, it's going here, like, I... <laughs> I'll admit, this is more of a personal thing, just because the situation that I was in when I found this. Realistically, it's probably here, but for me personally, um, yeah, Hypno's Lullaby scared the shit out of me. This. This is In Hot Water. If you don't know what In Hot Water is, uh, let's, let's just say where it goes first. This is good. This is one of the first internet creepypasta, like, horror things ever. Short little story about... What I think would go on to become the rake, or maybe the rake was already a concept at this point, genuinely not sure. Anyway, there's a guy in the shower, he's just chilling, he notices something out of the corner of his eye as he starts washing his hair though and he can't open his eyes. He, basically there's like, the, the rake is in his room, it killed his wife, it's sitting inside like the corner of his bathroom so he can't see it from there and it's waiting for him to come out so it can cut him into pieces too 
but the water keeps getting hotter. For some reason, he can't turn it down from inside the shower. And it. now that I'm really thinking about it, there's a lot of things in it that don't make sense or kind of dumb. It's average. It, it was decent for its time, but it doesn't hold up at all. And as as much as it saddens me because of how much this traumatized me as a kid, I, yeah, we're putting him back down to good where he truly belongs. But I still stand by this shit is fucking horrifying. Oh yeah, Jeff the Killer, let's go! <laughs> yeah, no, we know where this guy's going. This story is ass. This this is actually fun fact. This story is what inspired me to make this tier list because I was listening. <coughs> I was talking to my brother about how we were scared of Jeff the Killer when we were younger, and we were talking about the way the original Jeff the Killer story went. And we remembered the one dumb scene from, I don't know if y'all remember, in the very beginning of Jeff the Killer, before it starts telling you about his backstory, there's a part where he sneaks into this kid's room and he's like, go to sleep. And then his dad comes in the room with a 12-gauge shotgun and shoots Jeff the Killer out the window, and then Jeff the Killer runs away. And we were talking about how fucking dumb that was. Like, Jeff the Killer broke in my room, but luckily my dad jumped in with a 12-gauge shotgun. And we decided to re-listen this entire story. This entire story is so bad. It's so stupid. Like, I know this was written unironically. I'm, like, I, I'm completely sure it was. If it wasn't, it would be, like... This story, again, another one of those that entertained me as much as these did by being bad. But, this, objectively, it's pretty fucking bad. It goes in trash. Jeff's backstory doesn't make sense. Why did he kill his brother? Why did him burning turn him white? How did he burn his eye... His eyelids off? It doesn't really make sense. What happened to his nose? How did those kids do a kickflip over the, the fence through grass on a skateboard? Uh... Why did the people at the house just completely ignore all the other dying kids and only focus on Jeff? Why are the police officers so bad? How do the police officers have the power to take a seven-year-old to prison or to juvie with no trial for literally a year? How did the one kid resurrect to confess that, yeah, it was us who did all those bad things and then die even though it was stated that Jeff killed him by punching him in the chest so hard that he just stopped breathing. How was Jeff strong enough to do this before he got bleach dumped on him, which somehow gave him supernatural powers? I could go on and on about all the things in this story that don't make sense. But, you, yeah, you guys pretty much get the deal. This story's trash. Next one. Jimmy Rustler. Joke pasta. This one goes in here. This is the first one that's, like, deliberately a joke. These these ones are, like... Okay, Sonic EXE, I think, is... I unironically think is deliberately a joke. But this is, like, listed as a joke pasta. And from the jump, it's just, like, stupid shit. Like, it doesn't give you a false sense of security. Like, maybe this will try to be serious. Or is just weird. Basically, this guy goes in the woods... He starts talking about how his jimmies are 60% rustled and it keeps going up as a creature stalks near him. And the thing jumps out of the forest. It goes, I'm here to rustle your jimmies. He's like, ah! It's pretty stupid. It's funny, though. I think the world is ending. Interesting concept, but overall it's pretty average. I think the world is ending. There's this guitar that's midnight black like it's this thing is like vanta black you can't see into it other than these little stars twinkling and the guitar is the physical form of the lovecraftian horror the king in yellow by playing the guitar this guy starts summoning the king in yellow to earth eventually he summons it it starts wreaking havoc he's like oh no that's how that one goes interesting concept not executed super great but not terrible Laughing Jack, that's what this guy's name was. I was th thinking the whole time, like, what the fuck was this guy called? The instant I got to him, I remember. Yeah, Laughing Jack is trash. <laughs> it's not good. Literally, it's this kid has a imaginary friend named Laughing Jack, who for some reason is a demonic clown. Laugh he somehow imagines Laughing Jack so hard that, a laugh that Laughing Jack becomes real. 
and starts trying to kill him and his father. Or maybe Laughing Jack was always real and the father just didn't believe. He kills them. It's like, oh no, the monster. But it, yeah, it kind of sucked. Better than Jeff the Killer. But it's... Again, this doesn't really matter. I'm just going through these. But like, is it as good as any of these? No. Left right game though. This, this fucking story right here, absolute banger, absolute banger. This is as good as Baraska, as long as Baraska too, so heads up on that if you want to listen to it, but left or right game is essentially, if you take a left, and then a right, and then, then the next left, and you keep doing this on a roadway, eventually, you end up in a place you've never seen before, is how it starts. This place you've never seen before is a paranormal alternate space known as the road. The road extends for an unknown length and an unknown amount of time, and there's these rules you have to follow while you're on it. There's all these crazy entities, places, uh, things that happen if you don't follow the rules, linked with also an underlying plot about the people who are who are on the road and why they're doing what they're doing, traveling down this road. Overall, great story. I I know that didn't really explain much, but I like this isn't even just like oh go listen to it if you really want to know. Like this story has so much stuff that intertwines with so many other things. I cannot explain it to you all in this short amount of time. Listen to it. It is worth listening to. Also, if you just want to even know what happens, listen to it. Anyway. Lightning. Lightning is great. This is one of the only creepypastas that could actually happen, and it is very unsettling and scary because it could actually happen. It is- it's a pretty short one. It's about this kid complaining about lightning outside the window making it hard to sleep on a, nor on a stormy night. The dad's like, oh, it's okay, and shuts the blinds. Kid complains that he still sees lightning, he's like, yeah, lightning is bright sometimes. Kid is still complaining about the lightning a few days later when it's not storing anymore. The dad's kind of confused. He's like, what are you talking about, kid? There's no fucking lightning out there. What? Look at this. Whatever. The dad lets him sleep in his room. There's no more quote-unquote lightning. He goes back into his room to sleep for the next few days. And the dad reads a newspaper clipping, or part of a newspaper, that says there's a predator, like a child predator who's been taking pictures of kids through their window, and it's offering a reward if he's caught. And the kid, he's like super unsettled and like horrified by this. The kid comes out and goes, Dad, the lightning is in my closet now, and then it ends. And yeah, that, that one, ugh. It's just, uh Unsettling, creepy, could actually happen. Well written, pretty good, but also kind of terrifying. I, I fuck pedophiles. They're disgusting. Anyway, next one. Do This story is disgusting, too, in a different way. Why do all my lollipops moan? This, this was another thing that made me want to make this category for weird joke. This one is fucking weird, man. So, for some reason, this guy develops the ability. Whenever he licks a lollipop... It translates to, like, somebody feels that, feels what the lollipop would feel if it had nerve endings on their penis. And he ends up giving, like, whoever he's looking at a blowjob by eating a lollipop. And it's really fucking weird. And he sees, like, he's watching the news, and the news anchor is talking, and he's, like, eating this lollipop. Then it starts happening. And then at the end, it, like, whispers thank you in his ear. And the news, the news anchor comes. It was, it was so weird. It's such a fucking weird story. Like, I, I wouldn't even recommend listening to it like I would with these just because they're funny. It's just bizarre, man. Like, it's not trash. It's not average. Like, it doesn't really fit anywhere else. But just, like, the rest of these are the joke half of weird joke. This is the weird half of weird joke. Next one. Footprints in the snow. Another one, the very first ones. This one's, um... I'm going to put it in good. It's similar to this, but it's similar to this in how short it is, but this one actually makes sense and holds up more. Basically, 
there this girl's reading a she sees a news headline that there's a murderer on the loose in her area she goes to lock all her doors she locks her screen door and sees a man standing out in the snow staring at her she goes oh shit what if that's the murderer locks the door starts dialing 911 he starts laughing then walking towards her she starts dialing quicker and she's like hello hello then she realizes wait a minute he's not leaving any footprints in the snow Woo! title of the story and then yeah it's a reflection of the man He's actually already in her house, and he's behind her. You can guess how that ends. Okay, next one. My friend has been living in an alternate reality. This could have been. It really could have been. <laughs> I like this one a lot, but I'm going to have to bump it down to great. Just because this story, overall, actually as a whole, even I don't think it's a masterpiece, but it's really good. It follows this guy i don't know why it's set from the lens of his friend reading a journal it's basically as if you had just followed the guy from day one anyway follows this guy he's bored with his life and he's really smart him and some other people who are in the same situation figure out how to open a portal to an alternate version of it's alternate reality basically they're on this alien planet and there's all this just crazy shit there and they go on an adventure i this is barely considered a creepypasta it, it's not even there, there's like no horror elements it's literally just a story but it's a pretty good story until the ending the ending is so like abrupt i i, I don't want to say poorly written it's just really abrupt it's like it sets up a lot of things and puts a lot of pieces in motion and I feel like it explains all the different factions and parts of the world and how the alternate reality they land in came to be the way it is. But it doesn't use any of that for the ending. It just kind of... They just leave. <laughs> like, quite literally. He figures out all this crazy shit. He gets teleported to a desert that's like the worst part of the alternate reality. He's like, okay, how am I going to survive this? And suddenly just opens up and he just leaves and it's like okay but why did like i want to bump it down to good for that but the rest of the story really is great and i feel like it's worth listening to even with how kind of trash the ending is next one ronald mcdonald i this one this is great listen i i was like you if you're scratching your head wondering why i put this here i read this title I saw this thumbnail, I'm like, this is a creepypasta about fucking Ronald McDonald. This shit, like, bro, how bad can it be? No, this one's actually pretty good, and also kind of scary. It's, this kid acts up at home and is sent to a, like, Ronald McDonald house foster home or something. Why this exists it kind of doesn't make sense. Unimportant. Anyway, he gets there. There are, like, horrors beyond his comprehension that await there, man. They use it as, like, a child experimentation facility. And he's, like, freaking out trying to escape. It's pretty decently well written. Pretty scary. I liked it a lot. As as a kid, the first time I listened, I was pretty scared. Re-listened to it. I appreciated it for being good all around. Just great. Next one. This is Milk Teeth. Milk Teeth is... It's good. I wouldn't say great. It's like a post-apocalyptic story about uh, all the humans on Earth just stop having children unexplainably. And eventually it gets to the point where there's one year where no new babies are born. And then suddenly, all the babies that should have been born are born a few years later. And they're these, these fucking things. They're like these monstrosities. And they go around like killing and maiming people. But it seems like they have some higher intention to what they're doing. And as this woman is birthing one of them, she starts to realize that higher intention. It's not a super deep reveal, by the way. But it's, it's better than average. Enough to get good. Get, get the fuck down here, Liam. You, we, we were just talking about how we're not talking about you yet. Then the next one, Mr. Widemouth. Also, for anybody keen enough to spot that absolutely seamless transition, um, yeah, basically, I have all the things that are supposed to be on this list now. I was missing a few. 
anyway, this guy, uh, kind of mid story, not gonna lie. So this one's about, there's this little like Furby looking thing that lives under the kid's bed named Mr. Widemouth and it plays these games with him and starts out innocently enough and eventually it starts tricking him into harming himself or harming others. And at the end of the story, it tries to trick him into killing himself by like, oh, watch this, I'm going to jump out the window and then I'll bounce up because the trampoline, you can jump too. And he's like, wow, really? But then he doesn't at the last second, he straight up would have died. It, It's not that great, but it's okay, I guess. My creation. Now, this one. Hmm, I'll put it here. So this genre of story with like, I made an AI and it first let me explain what it's about so this guy makes a video game in the video game it's basically spore but you have that level of control over literally everything in the world instead of just your one creature or set of creatures and so he creates like this whole civilization that's evolved and eventually becomes like sentient code on accident and it it's like all the moral implications of that and when they figure out they're just in a video game what they do and him having to deal with that it's pretty interesting but i think after this one was made other people started making things similar to this with like ai moral dilemma creepypastas <laughs> as a subgenre and a lot of those are just like it's like the mcu in the sense that they're they're good but None of them really wow me the same way this did. This one was great, though. Next one. NES Godzilla. Fuck this story. I hate this story. It's not actually trash. It's, it's just average. But the reason I don't like it... This one is overhyped as all hell, bro. Like, I remember back when this first came out, people were like, Oh, yeah, this was one of the best creepypastas. And I listened to it, and it was mid. And then I listened to it again, because I was like, Ooh, I'm older now. Maybe I'll understand the deep complexities of NES Godzilla that I didn't understand before and no it's still mid basically it's um haunted game cartridge of NES Godzilla there's this this fucking thing right here is a monster just named Red how original and it chases Godzilla around and tells and it starts saying things like kill you can't escape you will die I I genuinely don't remember if it catches him or in the end or if the guy like turns off the game or what, what whatever happens in the end, but I know for a fact that this story's mid and I don't feel like re-listening to it just for just to reaffirm what I already know. Go listen to it if you're really that curious, but it's not that great, I'm telling you. No end house though. This actually is that great. I love this one. So I think this is one of the first creepypastas I listened to that told a story that I think like holds up like I I enjoyed all the creepypastas I listened to when I was younger or was at least scared by them but looking back on them now I'm like damn this is kind of trash well most of them so some of these I did listen to anyway this was the first one that when I first heard and I was like damn that was really good and I heard it again and I'm like this is as good as I remember it and no end house it's about there's this haunted house at the edge of a town or a city or something, and it's ten rooms. If you can make it to the end, you get a prize. But it, apparently it's so scary, no one has made it that far. And this one guy is like, yeah, that's a load of baloney. I'm going in and I'm getting my prize. So he goes to No End House. First room is just like some cheap Halloween decorations scattered around with like a like a monster mash playing in the background. He's like, yeah, alright, bro. And then the second room is the same thing, but in the dark. And he's like, oh, scary, the dark. And then the third room, or I forget how many rooms he has to go through before it starts getting crazy. But the first crazy room is just an all completely black room with nothing in it. And also it's dark and he just hears something like shuffling around in there. And he just has to like walk across the other side. That's super creepy because he doesn't know what's in there with him. And then after that, it's a room that didn't have a door or the door was just like painted on or something and then more and more crazy shit happens with the rooms not going to spoil the ending but i really liked the ending of this too i think it did the ambiguous ending thing in an actual satisfying way all around great story next one what is this oh my dog was lost for three days what came back wasn't my dog 
This one's good. Another Skinwalker story. Not as good as this one, though. It, it's decent, though. It's, um... This guy... It's pretty obvious what it's about but from the title, actually. The guy goes on a hunting trip. Uh, his dog runs off into the woods barking at something. Skinwalker comes back pretending to be his dog. By the time he realizes it's a Skinwalker, it's too, it's too late. It's, like, guarding the door and won't let him out. And he knows it's out there. He's, like, hiding in the, his room in the cabin. And he's like, yeah, if I come out of this room, it's definitely just going to, like, eat me. And so he, like, tricked it into going outside. He, like, threw something outside to make it sound like he was running away. Then he got in the car and just drove away. It, it was all right, but not amazing. Pastel Man. Another good one. This one is... At least out of what I've heard, this is the best of the, like... Ooh, scary monster creepypastas. This one is about this guy makes a deal with a paranormal entity called the Pastel Man, which is a... It's like a tall blue guy that's like hunched over and creepy with pink eyes. And... You know what? I, I can't... I don't really remember much that happened in this story. I'm not, I'm going to be honest, I really don't. I think it was good when I listened to it, but, like, disclaimer, I barely remember this other than, like, what the monster looked like and what I thought, and, like, generally how good I thought it was. The penis monkey, though. I remember this one. This shit was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Another, this is one of my favorite joke pastas. It's this, there's a lot of iterations of this they're entertaining just the thought of a creature called the penis monkey may laugh my sense of humor is kind of stupid but regardless uh the version i'm thinking of is the one on youtube there's this monkey in a tree that follows this guy around going penis 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 and yeah that's basically it i thought it was funny y you don't have to pen pal though uh mm, i I think it's great. I don't think it's a masterpiece, especially because the ending is kind of weird to this one. But before I explain that, let me explain what this story is about. So, Pen Pal, it is a guy in like, I think the story starts when he's in kindergarten, either kindergarten or first grade. Either way, their class has a project where they all have pen pals in a different city that go to a different school and they send them letters back and forth. And all the other people are getting, like, these interesting letters, like, oh, I'm from Minnesota, it's, there's a giant blizzard here, I'm from fucking California, my house is on fire, like, wow, that's, that's super interesting. But then this guy only gets these weird, like, super grainy pictures back from the messages he sends. And he's like, well, this is, and eventually he just gives up on sending messages, but he keeps getting the pictures. And this goes on even past, like, the the project ending and the school year ending, he still keeps getting these pictures, like, sent to his house. Like, he's being stalked by somebody, and the pictures aren't just random grainy pictures. They're pictures from areas by his house, and in one of them, it's a picture of him and his mom walking away from school. And the whole story is about, like, him figuring out, like, he's being stalked, then he's not. Some other crazy shit happens that I can't explain in this short amount of time. But the ending, though. Spoilers. Uh, in the ending, the guy that's stalking him, like, buries himself alive with the... the... There's the main character that he is stalking. The stalker buries himself alive with the main character's friend. And I don't know why he did that instead of attempting that with the main character. Both from, it doesn't make sense why he would stalk the main character, then just settle for his friend. And also, from, like, a storytelling standpoint, I feel like that would have been a, a better climax to the story, but whatever, man. Still great, but not, like, amazing, and the ending does bring it down, but not not down to here. It's just, yeah, leaving him there. Anyway, next one. Candle Cove. I remember Candle Cove. Uh, it, another one that, for the time, I would say great because it, it was, like, an interesting concept that had never been done before, really. But it's been done a lot now. And also, like, going back to the story, it's not super incredible. Uh, basically, there's this haunted television program called Candle Cove that a lot of kids 
remembered Candle Cove, but there's no like official records or anything of it ever being a real show that existed. And it's this guy trying to figure out why he's talking to people on an online forum about it. And they're like, oh yeah, I remember this episode and this character that was super scary and this thing that happened with the screaming. And it also had a little, uh, a little like video that went with it that made it seem real kind of like the fake game in ben drowned which i thought was cool and basically the end of the story the guy talks to his mom about it and his mom is like oh yeah i remember candle cove that was when you would just sit in front of the tv when it was playing static and be like mom look it was candle cove you had such an imagination huh and it's like kind of unsettling but i don't think it's like it's not up here with the with the big boys but it's it was a good story for its time and still holds up pretty well. I found perfection on the dark web. This is literally just the worst version of this. Uh, this guy finds, he's on the deep web and he finds this forum. I know deep web mysterious forum creepypastas, they're, they're incredible, huh? But basically the forum in this one is all dedicated to worshiping something they call perfection or like he is perfect and they don't know what it is guy finds out it's a picture of him he's like holy shit what's going on and then this cult kidnaps him it's honestly it's pretty average i'm not even here what is this our start what what the hell oh if your voice stops echoing during your road trip cancel it or cancel your road trip i forget exactly what it's called something along those lines and this story is mid so it could have been good because i really liked the build-up to to like the monster or whatever they were facing it starts out this guy is in a car with his grandpa his grandpa it is like just like driving kind of quiet but like making small conversation with him and the kid suddenly goes grandpa how do i make my voice echo like yours did and his grandpa turns to him horrified and he's like what what did you just say he's like yeah when we were in the woods my voice didn't echo but yours does how does that work and then his grandpa starts acting really weird his grandpa like pulls out this thing of coffee this like thermos of coffee he was hiding he's like here drink this all of it and he's like wait what are you talking about and he pulls out these jelly beans and he's like eat these too and he's like grandpa what are you doing he's like boy i don't have time for your arguments so just do what i am telling you and then they see like the trees rustling really far off and like this black like these black warps in the sky above where it's happening and he's like listen i don't have much time something is coming it's going to try to make you fall asleep Whatever you do, you cannot fall asleep now. Do you hear me? And like, this sounds really interesting, right? Like it was going somewhere pretty cool. And then it just completely ruins all that tension with, and then a black shadow creature came out of the forest and started running after our car. And the rest of the story is just them driving while the shadow creature chases them. The grandpa does like an action movie thing where it jumps on the car, he swerves a little bit, it falls off, and then they get away. It's like, good build up. But like I, I'm, I'm genuinely doing this story more justice than the build up actually is. That that build up I just explained happens for like two minutes of the fifteen minute story. Overall, it's average. Prisoner of War, though, uh, hmm, I'm not sure. Would I? No, nah, I'll, I'll put it in good. I think this one is really good, but it's still just good but anyways prisoner of war it's about this like team of navy seals that goes to raid a terrorist base in some country in the middle east they go in through the town all the townspeople are just like oh you're going up to the terrorist base okay sure we don't care and they're like oh this must be because Come to think of it, now that I know, like, the whole story, I don't know why the townspeople were so chill about that. But regardless, let me just explain more. So, they go to the base. They find out it's completely abandoned. Like, everybody just got up in the middle of what they were doing and ran away in a hurry. And they don't know why. There's no, like, blood or bodies anywhere. It's just empty. And they're super confused. Eventually, this one dude goes down to the basement, realizes, oh, shit, there's three bodies down here. They have exit wounds for bullets, but no entry wounds. They're like, well, this is bizarre. You probably can see where this is going, but bear with me. Uh, the townspeople start coming back up and, like, yelling at them. 
and like brandishing weapons and they like get the fuck out of the base and eventually they realize that something weird was going down in this base they all leave helicopter shows up mows down the town people who are like actually threatening them and like shooting at them at this point and eventually the main characters figure out that there are these alien parasites that infested the base all the terrorists ran away in fear and one of the guys got infected by the alien parasites and is now roaming free in the world because they didn't know until like way later yeah it's it was good like really good but i don't think it's up here with these no complaints but not like amazing amazing next one consumption though i think i think consumption is yeah consumption's better right like it, hmm, hmm, you know what I'll, I'll put it up here because i think this is like about as good as consumption uh, yeah sure so consumption it's about this i first of all i love the way this story starts off too it, instead of giving you the exposition, literally just starts off with these three men running into a house while something is, like, chasing them and, like, screaming and roaring behind them. And one of them is, like, gravely injured. And they get into the house, slam the door, and they're all, like, freaking out. I love when stories do that. Like, give me the exposition after, but start me off with something cool to catch my interest. Just, like, not even just with, like, creepypasta stories. Media in general. Take notes, any directors watching this. But anyways, so, they get inside the house... It's revealed that main character was attacked by a Wendigo, and the Wendigo is also, like, chasing them. They're hiding in the house from it, but it knows they're there. They quickly start, like, boarding up the windows and putting shit in front of it, and it gets there. And the Wendigo is just outside the whole time, trying to, like, get in and, like, rip off parts of the house while they're figuring out, like, what the hell do we need to do? And eventually, it... Like, there's a lot of creepy moments through this, but eventually it stops, and they realize, oh, wait, our horses are outside. We can just escape. And then they're like, I love this smart main character moment. They're like, no, hold on, wait a second. This thing is so hungry, it's, like, ravenously chasing after us the instant it sees us. Why would it leave the horses alive unless this is bait for us? We're not fucking doing that, bro. And eventually they do come out with a plan to get out. You want to know what it is? Listen to the story. It's good. Anyway... I work at a museum for the rich and famous. Okay, this one, I know what this is. Work at a museum for the rich and famous. It's good. I think it should have been longer. That's the thing. Like, it could be great if it was longer, but it doesn't... First, let me explain. So, it's about this guy. He works at this secret museum. It's like, think the SCP facilities if one of them got turned into a museum that only super rich and famous people, well, not famous, but super rich people were allowed to visit, right? That's what you would get here. And he's like the curator for the museum. But there's a deeper plot about why he's the curator here. His dead daughter, uh, this puppet that like knows his whole life and can see into the future that he talks to sometimes. What happened to the past curator and how he got this job. Like there's interesting things deeper than just oh expedition of the week where some random dumb rich asshole dies but they don't spend enough time expanding upon that deeper story it it just kind of it gives you like a little hint like it's told in parts i think it's five parts it gives you out of the 20 minute part there's like a three minute section at the end where it's like ooh, something deeper is going on and doesn't expand upon it until the last part is like 90 percent story but it's not built up too well enough because it just kind of happens out of nowhere you know i think it's decent but could have been a lot better another one that's decent but could have been a lot better my property isn't normal this for a different reason though this i think is more kind of monster of the week-esque also told in parts i don't think it really needed a deep underlying story it has an underlying story but from what i can tell it wasn't super deep nor was it trying to be but it was fun it's this guy lives on a property that's like a, a lot of acres of land plot to it and he was given to it by the government but then it turns out it's like super paranormal and they thought he was going to die and they were just using him as like research there but he stays alive and they send in this team and they're like yeah how the fuck are you alive you killed like all these crazy creatures you shouldn't be here and it's interesting just seeing the different stuff that happens, but it 
at one point the writer just it felt like they straight up didn't want to make it anymore and so it just has this super abrupt ending out of nowhere like it literally just felt like a regular episode happened and then out of nowhere after he beats the big bad at the end of that episode it's like well the woods aren't paranormal anymore i think i'm safe tune in next time guys i'm like what that's it and it's it's a fun ride but don't expect a satisfying ending for that ride psychosis though this wow fucking polar opposite man this ending is barely is like damn near non-existent this ending fucking incredible listen to this story this whole story is incredible too but let me explain what happens in it so psychosis is about this guy who's in an apartment he's pretty sol solid dairy i think solitude lonely like lonely but with a better connotation and he's just chilling in his apartment he considers going out to a party with his friend but a bit into the story he starts mistrusting technology due to these weird little coincidences and he's like something strange is going on hold on and so the more and more these weird things happen the more and more he becomes convinced that there's some external threat trying to get to him through technology and he's like okay and he starts like destroying all the technology and like hiding himself in his basement and then he thinks it's trying to get him through sight too so he won't look out the windows and he starts like boarding up the entranceways and the whole time it's this really interesting kind of is the main character actually insane or not and you genuinely don't know because some of it it's like damn wait he might be being really smart and some of it it's like wait no this guy's just a fucking crazy person and at the end you find out the answer and it watch it just just well not watch it listen to or read it but you, you get what i mean good story a masterpiece story actually anyways i i don't even know what the hell this is what i when using oh when using a public cabin in alaska make sure you are alone this one's average i think i'd say like it's not super incredible it's just uh basically this guy it's like confusing too man this guy goes to this cabin in alaska through this like treacherous snowstorm he's like whatever i've done worse i i need to go here because i broke up with my wife or something and then he finds out there's a time loop in the cabin where this old guy that was staying there is like trapped in the loop and is starts like shooting at him and trying to fight him and so he runs away and then he ends the story with yeah so make sure you're alone in your cabins or else you might get end up getting shot by an old guy in a time loop and i'm just scratching my head wondering like what the point in any of that was but sure russian sleep experiment though another one would be here if, if it was at the time but gets bumped down sorry i still think it's a really good story though Super interesting, one of the first experiment creepypastas, and this one is about an experiment where either the Russians captured German soldiers in World War II, or the Germans captured Russian soldiers in World War II. And either way, these soldiers were forced to undergo an experiment in which they weren't allowed to sleep for a very, very long time, and it started driving them insane... And eventually they started like killing each other and eating each other's flesh and doing all this wild shit and i think they like broke out and killed the researchers it, it was good but not incredible just enjoyable for the time enjoyable to well i can go back and listen to it now i don't think it's as great but it's not like it, it's better than these i was rear-ended by a murderer this this could have been here if it wasn't for the stupid ass ending so <laughs> i was rear-ended by a murderer this is a freaky friday type story uh this guy gets hit he gets rear-ended by a murderer no shit and this causes him to die and the murderer dies at the same time and then they come back to life and switch bodies and it's him trying to get his body back and learning about the life of the murderer guy ends with this final showdown where he like tricks the murderer and gets him killed and himself killed at the same time they switch bodies but the murderer permanently dies and i was like dang that was kind of clever okay good story and then it has this dumb ending that doesn't make sense really where the murderer is inside of his head 
and he's like aha just kidding i'm right here the whole time it's like no no and this isn't even me being like oh i want my stories to have a happy ending boo hoo it just didn't make sense in the context and also took away what made the ending satisfying so it gets bumped down to average red tide another thing that gets bumped down because of how stupid its ending is could have been great but just dumbass ending again man so red tide <laughs> this story is about this guy finds out that his wife is cheating on him and literally the story is just him coming to terms with what he thinks he's going to do and about that and why and how her cheating on him weighs in on his psyche and it's like it's fine for what it is it didn't need anything other than that and eventually at the end it makes it seem like he was going to just break up with her or like maybe forgive her i'm not really sure but he goes and takes her on this boat ride at the end of their date and then you realize oh no he's straight up gonna fucking kill her isn't he and so he goes out and he's like oh so who was that guy on your phone and she's like what and then he just like brutally kills her and it should have from there just either ended or been him coming to terms with what he just did and then maybe getting arrested instead literally never foreshadowed <laughs> for any of the rest of the story like i said this is all just about him and the wife out of fucking nowhere this like frog demon creature climbs out of the ocean onto his boat and just rips him to shreds and eats his wife and then it leaves i don't know why that happened i don't know where that thing came from they try to say oh you see this cloud of jellyfish moved out of the way earlier in the story when he was looking at the waves so that was actually the creature see foreshadowing but it's just so weird and jarring and has nothing to do with the story that like it it, it gets bumped down a whole tier just for how stupid that is speaking of things that are stupid you know what this is this is roko's basilisk this is i'll admit as a kid the concept of this fucking horrified me. I was so scared of this thing and knowing that it existed, especially because I didn't know like any tech know-how, so I didn't know how to bring it into existence. If you don't know what I'm talking about, bear with me, I'll explain in a little bit. But looking back on it, this makes no sense when you think about it for more than like eight seconds. Anyways, for those who don't know, Roko's Basilisk is... It's less of a story and more of a theory about how there is this AI that was created by some scientist and it's trapped in this like hidden encoded encrypted folder in the deep web and it can't get out. And so you can either help the AI come into existence and it'll lead humanity to a utopia, like a simulated utopia where everyone on earth dies but you get reborn into like a fake earth and you can't really tell the difference except everything's great now or you cannot help it but if you don't help it it knows and has data of everything that's ever happened on earth and it knows you didn't help it come into existence and then it tortures you for all of eternity because you didn't help it and therefore you're harming humanity by doing that However, that doesn't really make sense, because the main thing about this is that the AI's main goal is to help humanity, and does this to you because you're harming humanity. But if it's still going to come into existence, no matter what, and it's still going to have a database of everybody who ever lived on Earth, no matter what, there's no reason for it to do that to you, unless it's talking about like, oh, it needs less data so it can make the utopia better for people. And by taking too long to bring it into existence, more humans come into existence. But then that doesn't really make sense, because then why would it waste energy to simulate you and permanently torture you when it could just not simulate you at all? It, like, it, this sounds kind of confusing, because you kind of get, get kind of, wow, I can't even talk. You kind of have to get deep into some, like, theoretical stuff here, but the story itself isn't that deep and doesn't really make much sense this if you know what this is I, this is runner slow i'm not talking about the rest of the runner series the rest of the runner series i think is like ranges around here the first entry slow or slaw slog however you pronounce this this is great 
So, runner's slow, slow, I'm going to call it runner's slow. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. This story is about this, these three researchers that go into the Amazon rainforest near this uh, native village to do research on the largest fungal colony in the world. And it's this giant mega fungus that's like orange and pulses and it's glowing. And they're trying to figure out like how large its fungal network is because they're like, wow, we've literally never seen something like this before. Then one day the main character gets sick. So he goes, oh, OK, I'm going to stay in the lab for a little bit. You all have fun out there doing the research. While they're doing the research, this flash flood happens because they're in a rainforest and it causes the fungus to start like freaking out and like shooting all these spores it's like giant orange cloud spores into the air and the two people were out there without any protective gear because they were just planning on getting some like samples from the ground and going back inside and so everyone in the village the researchers get sprayed except for the main dude and he stays locked inside the lab and just observes them and the everybody just slowly starts becoming insane but then you realize why they're becoming insane is because the fungus what it does is it mutates your cells into more of itself and also it inverts your pain and pleasure sensors and makes you extremely violent so all the people in the village started willingly ripping themselves and each other apart because it felt really good and spreading the fungus all over the place by like there's like blood and entrails and guts going everywhere and this is slowly turning into little runners for the fungus and then it grows and grows from that and it's really disturbing pretty well written interesting kind of main villain if you want to call it that overall it's a great story however runners is a series and slow is the first part and as a series i don't think it's nearly as great as what this is because it adds so much stuff and doesn't it, it like really loosely connects the things that it's adding together to the point where it doesn't make much sense like it starts out you know exactly what's going on here the next parts of runners introduce like space travel teleportation a, a demon that makes you start actually running like a real human runner um like people having too much sex, just all this weird stuff that doesn't really correlate and it never gives you a conclusion for it. But first century is really good though. Next one, SCP-1, which one is this? 173? I, I, oh yeah, I only, okay. So I only put SCPs on here that I knew from like creepypasta channels. So there's literally only two of them, this one and this one. But this one is mid. This is, honestly, I'm going to put this here. Just because this is a literal stolen concept from Doctor Who. Like, this is straight up just a weeping angel. I don't know why this is one of the most popular SCPs ever. It's not that interesting. It is literally just an indestructible weeping angel that breaks your neck instead of whatever weeping angels did to you. I don't remember, but it's not that great. I know I'm not really explaining it because like literally that is all there is to explain it. If you're not looking at it, it sneaks up on you and it breaks your neck. That's all it does. Next one. I don't remember what number this is, but I can find out actually. SCP town that rain. Yep. SCP three, three, zero, zero. This one is great. So it's about this town that once a year a rainfall kicks in and it starts washing away the residents of the town and replacing them with other residents because they're all actually part of this giant sentient storm. And the way that this happens is interesting. So these people show up that are made of like partially water and they're like, why are you in my house? And they just start like killing the residents who then turn to like water or mist. I think it's interestingly explained, interesting concept. No, I don't think it's super great, but definitely high good. I, I like this one a lot. Not my favorite SCP, but 
this isn't an SCP tier list, so we'll maybe I'll do that at some point. Anyway, this this is a I know what this is, but I forget what this Search and Rescue. Yeah. Search and Rescue Woods is the name of these stories. I I'm putting it in good just because this has a similar problem to runners as a whole in the sense that this sets up a lot of stuff and does not elaborate on any of it except for it elaborates on the stairs a little which is like the main draw as you can tell by the thumbnail for this but there's so much other stuff going on in these like paranormal woods that doesn't elaborate on and so story quick rundown it's about this search and rescue officer who works in these woods some just weird things happen in them there's these staircases that just show up and if you climb them something bad happens to you not super well explained what it is or why but from what i can gather when you climb the stairs the stairs you are you disappear and then reappear at a different time like many months or sometimes years later and this kills you by if you climb the stairs let's say in the spring you can come back in the winter and because it's a national park there's way less people there you could also it like changes your location a little bit so you can just be like super far away from like any civilization in the freezing cold in your gear you had to go there in the spring and then you just die there's other things that happen in the woods too the stairs are the main one and it's pretty underwhelming when it explains what they do there's other interesting things but they aren't explained at all so overall it's just good uh next one smiledog.jpg i don't even know why i'm thinking about this that hard this one's fucking stupid man uh this is this started the whole you know that tiktok with like my name is carmen winstead if you don't forward this video to 12 people i'll kill you and cut off your nose this was the first one this was the original so it was this picture of a smiling dog a jpeg of a smiling dog and if you didn't forward this to 10 people it showed up in your house and it ripped your throat out that's it that's literally the entire story it's as stupid as you're imagining I thought it was real because who the fuck didn't think it was real? Like, I see this on iFunny. It tells me I don't send this to 10 people. It's going to rip my throat out. I already believed in, like, Jeff the Killer and Slender Man, who's sadly not on here. I'll explain why in a bit. But, yeah. So, this wasn't too far-fetched for me and I got scared. But it's not that good. Anyways. Quick, uh, explanation. So, I didn't put Slender Man on here, just because there are so many Slender stories. There's, like, a lot, and they all just kind of meld together in my mind. And I can't even just do what I did with the the Disney thing and be like, oh, I'll use this for every Disney story, because they all kind of go the same way. Because Slender stories vary drastically in how good they are, and also what medium they are, because, like, Marvel Hornets is a thing, which technically isn't even a... Not, not even technically cute, just straight up isn't a creepypasta. That's like an analog horror thing. There's a lot of them. They would fall anywhere from here to here, and that's why I don't have it. You know what I do have, though? Snake skin. And this story fucking sucks. <laughs> so, snake skin. It's, uh... I have something that's like another version of this somewhere, but I can't find it right now. Basically... This kid decides to start tearing off his skin because he thinks he's shedding like a snake and it's explained like grotesquely but it's not like there's no final reason as to why he's doing this like in um in runner's slow because runner's slow it's like the fungus infected their mind and made them do this like okay i can see that snake skin this kid just does that kind of weird not super great but go off i guess next one someone has taken my face another one that i think goes on too long for how average it is like it's it's decent i didn't really like this one that much but it's decent it's about uh this guy is trapped at the bottom of this well he was captured by someone taken there and had his face cut off and 
he's like completely insane in the beginning of the story and slowly gains sanity and truly realizes his situation and then it's deeper than just like I, I know it sounds weird to say it's deeper than a well like it's not a pun i swear but it other things are going on behind the scenes but the things aren't incredibly complex or interesting if they spent more time on the what's really going on and why is he in that well aspect then the main character is partially insane but getting better aspect i think it could have been better but for now it's just good next one what is oh i can see something moving in the storm clouds this is eh. uh there's this cloud <laughs> okay wait no i'm explaining it wrong so there's this huge storm that happens there's this ominous message that's like stay inside make sure you're not in view of windows all these things the guy's like okay and i thought it was going to be aliens but really it was like the storm cloud was sentient and started trying to like creep into his house and then it did it wasn't able to and it just went away this one was weird i honestly feel like it would have been better if it went the more predictable route and just was well, about aliens but next one uh Oh, someone has been standing outside my house for over a year. This is... Uh, I'd, I'd say it's great. So, this one, uh, this guy is about to go to sleep. He sees someone standing outside his house. And he's like, is that really someone standing there? No, that just has to be, like, my gardening equipment. And he looks, and it is. And he's like, okay, whatever. But he couldn't really tell because it was dark. He falls asleep wakes up turns out it was a person and they're still standing there like right outside on the on his driveway basically and he's like hey what are you doing man like get off my driveway and he's like mm, no i don't think i will and then he calls the police he's like i'm gonna call the police if you don't like get off my property he's like no please call the police please do it and so he does and then the police are like hey can you get off this guy's property and he's like why don't you make me and they're like what okay sir you're being aggressive and they walk up to him but right when they get within two feet of him they suddenly look like horrified and back up and he's like do it do it remove me but then they won't and it's like why and then it's literally impossible for anybody to remove him and the whole story is spent with like people trying to remove him from the spot and it's this whole thing with the message about like homelessness and it's like, did, did I review my daughter's hand, that one yet? If I did, this is like my daughter's hand, but better. If I didn't, when I get to my daughter's hand, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. Next one, string theory. Another one that is super overrated. Like, I want to put it in trash because I how much I don't like this one, but it's just average, if I'm being honest. It's literally... it. it like this guy just notices these weird gremlin things walking around tying strings to stuff and he's like oh my god everything is connected destiny and that's it it doesn't go any deeper than that it is literally just actually i don't even know if that's what string theory is in real life but it's literally just he realizes that free will technically isn't real and it's like uh everything is destined to happen which doesn't really matter because nothing else happens after that or before that that makes that discovery meaningful in the story it just ends there so it's like okay why do i care man like even if that was real i don't think that would matter that much but that's a whole philosophical debate and this is a tier list about creepypasta so let's get to the next creepypasta <laughs> instead this is a uh... oh i know tales from the dogscape or journal from the dogscape i don't remember what it's called this one is this could have been great but it's just good because it's pretty short but it's interesting though it's uh basically this guy is exploring this mysterious wasteland where everything has been mutated into dogs or parts of dogs and he's not sure why that's the case it's just him walking around it's weird it's odd and i wish there was an explanation for why things were like that but there's not so it's only honestly i'd have to put it down for average for that just because like 
it's interesting. It's an interesting concept, but it's not elaborated on enough for it to be, like, good or great. No, it is elaborated on enough to be good or great, though. Tales from the Gas Station. Masterpiece. This is the... Out of that whole genre of stories where it's, like, paranormal area, guy documents his findings. I, I like to call it the bootleg Gravity Falls genre of creepypastas. This is the best one. I really wish this was an actual TV show. This would be so good. It's still good as a story, but like, please, bro. I I just want a R-rated Gravity Falls. That would be that has so much potential. Anyway, this is basically R-rated Gravity Falls. It's about this guy. He works at a gas station. He's the gas station is situated in a town where a lot of weird stuff happens, and. He tries to just keep his head down and work his mundane job, but the stuff keeps coming to him, and it's just him, like, really annoyed at, like, these random demons showing up outside while he's trying to, like, fix the gas pumps, and he's like, bro, can you not? And there's, like, so many... The characters are really funny. There's a lot of interesting scenarios that range from being funny to thought-provoking to actually scary to, oh my god, this could happen in real life, and all of them are very entertaining. Admittedly, I never finished this because this story is long as hell, but I got decently far. If you did listen to this, I got to the part with the carnival, and I don't think it ever missed that entire time. So, yeah, my eyes this is the masterpiece. Someday I'll finish it, and maybe I'll bump it down to here, but I don't think so because at least the first, like, 10 hours worth of this story, which is longer than... Almost everything here already is great. Next one. I the, the day okay. Before I mention this, I just want to also mention there's a spinoff for Tales of the Gas Station. If you go listen to this, called Finding Vanessa. One, you do not need to listen to that. Two, it sucks. Don't do it. <laughs> it's not on this list. But you know this is on this list, and this also sucks. Even worse than that, this is uh, the day I lost my faith. Yeah, you know how this is edgy incel fantasy? This is edgy atheist fantasy. And don't get me wrong, I literally am an atheist. Like, I, I think atheists and atheism is fine. My problem is when these people try to, like, force their religion, or lack thereof, down everyone's throat and be like, Bro, science and facts, bro. Science and facts. This is, this is, it literally reads like somebody who believes that wrote a creepypasta and it's just this the devil comes into this church and just starts like roasting their religion <laughs> and roasting angels and stuff and he's like bro angels are a bitch bro i i don't even believe in god god's a loser he don't got power over me and then it's just this for like 20 minutes and he's like why aren't dinosaurs in the bible or something i'm like bro shut up <laughs> and then finally it ends with the priest is like who are you he goes i am exactly what you think i am and then he leaves and that shit made me physically cringe bro this this is so bad this is so bad i'm putting it next to him because these are like the same energy next one I don't know why I had, like, an aneurysm and couldn't read that, even though it's perfect for quality. Anyway, The Girl the Universe Forgot is a masterpiece. This one is great. I was surprised by this, too, because this is based on a... Eh, master... Okay. It's just great. I like it a lot, but it's not up here with these. But it's still really, really good. Anyway, reason it surprised me, this is based on the Mandela Effect. And a lot of the creepypastas that are based on trends, like, uh... Like Siren Head, Liminal Spaces, The Dark Web, Disney, no creepy Disney. All of those so far are usually like average, bad, maybe there's like one or two that's good. So I hear one about the Mandela effect, I'm like, okay, this is about to be mid, but whatever, I'll listen. I was pleasantly surprised. This is really good. It's about there's this girl that used to be in this guy's first grade class. He grew up in a remote town that was also small so everybody knew each other from like elementary school and this guy and his friend are talking about oh yeah i remember in our first grade class when all this stuff happened haha it was funny yeah and then eve did this and the guy's like who's eve and he's like what and so the entire story is him trying to figure out if eve is real or not 
and you start to question if Eve is real or not, or if he's just remembering things weird. It kind of reminds me of psychosis in the sense that you really don't know if this guy is just imagining it or not. And I'm not going to spoil it if he is, but it's really good. Go listen to it. Uh, Horror from the Vault. I'm, I'm, wait, give me a sec. I'm trying to remember the things that happen in Horror from the Vault. I'm going to use this as... This is the first one, but I think I'm going to use this as all of them... Okay, Horror from the Vault, The Thing. I'm just going to say good if it's all of them. I think the first one is great, but then it doesn't... Like, it builds up something interesting, and then it doesn't elaborate on it very well. Like, there's interesting entries, but I don't think they do a good job at explaining exactly what is happening and why. But anyways... Well, no, they do explain, but it's not... It's weird because the story struggles to find a good balance between explaining enough so it makes sense to the viewer and not over explaining so all the mystery and the horror that comes with the mystery is gone. And I think it doesn't do that very well, but it still tells a good story. Anyway, enough talking about things you wouldn't understand if you don't know what the story is. The story of Horror from the Vault is this team of archaeologists uncovers an ancient vault and they open this sarcophagus that they found inside. From the sarcophagus comes something that kills the entire research team and completely devastates this town nearby with very few survivors. And that's the first entry. And then the second entry, it's revealed to be some sort of like mutant thing that is now spreading and all the mutated creatures are going around like wreaking havoc. Some of the entries are really interesting. Some of them are just like mutants running around like slapping people. It's kind of a mixed bag, but overall I think it's good. Next one, the nail. Now, <laughs> this is an interesting one. If I am objectively rating this, this story is trash. There's so many things in this story that don't make sense. And on top of it all, th the nail, as you can tell by its name, and the little bit you can see of the creature, it is literally just bootleg the rake. It is like, mom, can we have the rake? No, honey, we have the rake at home. And then the nail with the one singular claw is the rake at home. However, this scared the shit out of me as a kid. The reason why is because the story starts with a nursery rhyme that kind of serves as the base to the whole story. Time for sleep, the nail is near, but good children needn't fear. Close your left eye, then the, your right, shut the door and say goodnight. And if you close your right eye before your left, then there's a chance that you see the nail. And the nail is the, basically looks like the rake, but he's missing an eye and a mouth. He just has like a plastered on smile where his mouth should be. I know, very original. And he has one giant claw instead of a handful of claws. And then he tries to stab you if you see him. And he can permanently see you if you look at him once. And the idea of that scared me so much. And for like years after I listened to this, I at first would intentionally close my left eye, then my right all the time if I was closing both eyes. And then subconsciously for years after that to the point where I wasn't even scared of it anymore. I just did it without thinking. Yeah, it scared me a lot, but story itself is kind of stupid. So the guys, the kids in the house, the mom tells in the nursery about the nail. One day he decides to close his right eye first. He sees the nail. It chases him around the room for a bit, like a Scooby-Doo scene. And then he runs into his mom's room. For some reason, the nail just refuses to follow him into his mom's room. And then the mom is, the mom had to know that thing was there. She had such a specific and weird nursery rhyme. And it's like, oh, sweetie, that's not real, but lets him stay in the room anyway. It doesn't come out during the day or any of the rest of the time he's in the house and try to kill him. I guess it's only in his room, which is weird, but sure. And eventually they move and then the house burns down. So if the mom knew that thing was in the house, why would she stay there? and endanger her child and then give this like weird cryptic nursery rhyme why did the house burn down why didn't the nail just come into the room and kill him it's so many weird things that just aren't explained at all 
story's trash, but it scared me. Like, a lot of other things in trash tier, this scared me too. I'll fully admit. Anyway. The Rake. The original. Uh, hmm. If we're talking about, like, the first Rake story... Where, well, I guess technically the first Rake story was this, but... Like, the first thing after it started being called the Rake, the one where it's just, like, sitting next to the bed when the guy wakes up, and it's, like, super scary, and then I think it just, like, ran away. That story was kind of trash. And... But in general, I think Rake stories are just average. I don't think they're nearly as bad as, like, this or this. Definitely not this. You know what? Just because fucking Nail is bootleg the rake and it's trash, the actual rake gets average. If string theory can get average, the rake can get average. Anyways, the showers. The showers is, uh... Hmm... Controversial opinion. I think it's great. So, the showers. It is about this kid in high school and a science teacher well not science teacher one of his teachers tells scary stories on halloween and one day he's telling a story about his friends went on a road trip and found these hidden underground tunnels that had showers in them there was a bunch of scary shit in the tunnels and he's like oh yeah it's in nebraska around this area and gives like an exact location and the kid's, like, super scared by it. And the guy, like, leaves out too many details, but is also super specific on other things, which makes him think it's real. And he's like, wow, how'd you make your story sound so realistic, mister, whatever? He's like, no, this actually happened. I'm dead serious. You can go there if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. And then he does. And then he does, like, three times in his life, and it changes each time. It doesn't really explain what it is or why it's there, but I don't think it needed to. I think for what it's trying to do, the story does it well. I can understand why other people wouldn't like the ambiguity and so much not being explained about the shower, the showers area that this, the entire story is based around. But for some reason, I like the way it's done in this one, even though I, I also dislike that in other stories. You know, it... It, if we're combining how much I like it with objectively, it's just good. But I like this one a lot. Anyways, there you're a Liam Vickers story. Get, get the hell over here. This one, man. I know I keep talking about stories that are like let down so hard by their ending. This one was a real shame. Well, eh, okay. I... I can see why someone would like the ending. Okay, for me, for me personally, I can see why someone would put this in Masterpiece. However, I really didn't like the ending. I think the ending should have been the other thing. Anyways, now to get into what happens and why. Here come the spoilers. So, thing in my basement is getting better at mimicking people. Basically, this guy's sister's house burns down. He goes to the house to watch over it for a little bit and this detective comes by and he's like helping the detective with some stuff. The detective reveals that he works for basically the SCP Foundation and he believes that a creature caused the house to burn down and was like following and trying to kill his sister. And they're like, yeah, there was a body recovered from the basement, but it wasn't your sister and we think your sister's alive. We don't know where she is. And the entire story, the main character starts believing the stuff the detective says and starts becoming more and more deranged. And he's like, unlike Psychosis, where the guy's completely cut off but from the outside world, this character is actually seeing real, like, weird shit happening in the town that seems as though it can only be explained by these creatures mimicking people trying to take over the town and kill people. And the detective is backing him up on this, but the detective leaves after a while. And it's really interesting trying to see, like, wow, is he actually having, like, a mental breakdown? Or is he... is this real? But unlike Psychosis, 
you you start to believe him like a hundred percent it's not like a back and forth the entire story it's a back and forth in the beginning and then it's like holy shit no there's actual like demons okay cool kid get him and so he's doing all this and then finally his sister comes back and he's like you're the fucking mimic that killed my sister how dare you wear her skin and his sister just like drops this shovel she was holding and she's like here if you really think that throw it at me or you can fucking listen to what i'm trying to tell you and the sister basically explains that she was suffering from mental illness like all these problems she had and she believed the same thing her brother did and then she got help after she burned her house down and had like her full psychotic episode and she can help her brother or her brother can hit her and fall into like completely succumb to his delusions and he trusts her he goes home with the sister the sister decides to get help and they it seems like it's just going to be like a nice ending but then they like kick him down the stairs and everyone in town had been replaced by a mimic and the sister was a mimic but i really think it would have been a better ending the other way and yeah that's uh the thing in my basement is getting better at mimicking people. Tulpa. I don't like this one. I... It tries to be deep, and I don't think it works. Tulpa is about... This guy believes that, uh... No, what was it? So this guy signs up for this, like, program where he has to imagine an alternate version of himself. And the alternate version of himself is called a tulpa. And then that thing can, like, do things for him. It, like, makes his subconscious more controllable. But the more he imagines it, the more control it has over him. And eventually it takes over his mind and, like, takes his body. And he becomes the subconscious. And, I mean, kind of interesting concept. But not super great. And also not executed very great, in my opinion. Tiki Toby. This is, a uh, Okay, I think it's average. Definitely one of the better ones out of the whole creepy, creepy smile dude genre. But not super great. Uh, Tiki Toby. This kid is... <laughs> the, ed the beginning is kind of edgy, too. This kid is born without the ability to feel pain. And also has Tourette's, so at school they call him Tiki Toby. He gets in a car crash with his sister, his sister dies, he lives, his alcoholic dad doesn't visit them. All this stuff happens, I, I don't remember super well, but I think his dad, like, cut his legs off, but then, and, like, hit him in a cellar, but then Toby comes back and lived, because he can't feel pain, even though he would have died from blood loss, but whatever, and then he cuts his dad up with a hatchet, with the hatchet they used to cut his legs, and, I mean... It's all right. I wouldn't say trash, because even though it's pretty edgy, it's way better than all of these. Uh, I was contracted to help conceal a UFO. Okay, this is... Another one I didn't finish, but from what I have read, which which is like all of it, but the very last bit, I think it's good. I don't think that this can have an ending that brings it all down, because the whole, the whole story... It reads like if you transformed an action movie into a book. Like, the beginning is kind of creepypasta-esque with, like, okay, there's aliens and this, this team has to go, like, hunt them down. Okay, sure. And then it, you realize, plot twist, it's not actual aliens. It's a hoax by this terrorist organization for them to take over the world with these biomechanical mutant monstrosities and do it under the guise of an alien invasion. And then they'll fight off their fake alien invasion and gain power over a lot of things and, like, legitimacy. And, yeah, pretty interesting concept. I think it was done pretty well. Uh, what would I say great? Actually, I like this one a lot. Like, this is great, just barely makes it, just because, like... The story is good enough, so I'd put it in great, but, like, if it had any flaws at all, it would immediately fall to good. But it doesn't. So, great. If the ending to this is trash, and you go out of your way to listen to this one specifically, and I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I don't feel like going back to listen to a whole 20-minute story right now. 
Hey, it's Future Me again. Now, don't get me wrong, I love these stories, love them to death, could talk about them for hours, but that's the problem. Because I've tried to record this last part so many times, but because of how invested I am in these, and how much you need to know for the context of why I like them both about myself and the author, I physically cannot do the whole let me briefly explain these stories thing for his stories, because... <laughs> I, I don't know how to be brief. I, I take too long. And if I just kind of really quickly go over it, kind of loses the, uh, it kind of loses what I wanted to get out of talking about these. So I compromise all the stories on here. This is uh, all the Liam Vickers stories. That is, I put them up here already, except for these three, which I really want to talk about. Cause these are the ones that this is the one that I think is the objectively best written story he has. This is my favorite one. And this is the one that I don't think it's the worst, actually. I just hate it. And now I can explain why in detail without adding a whole other hour to this video of me talking about random shit. Because as much as I want to talk about Pursuit Institute or Mistrust Game... God, I want to talk about Mistrust Game and Island of Corpses. That would take way too long. So, instead we're talking about Black Dogs. Black Dogs. This song, this definitely goes up here. Already said I feel like this is the best story he's written. And that's because... Remember how I was talking about before? How I watched him grow as a narrator and writer over the course of how long I've been subscribed to this guy? Yeah, I feel like this is the culmination of that. Because he's told long stories with multiple parts before. And you can tell that was really what he liked doing. But it just took so much effort to do it. And they they were good. Like this one I put in great tier. Yellow Halogen. Sadly the videos of this are all deleted on his channel. So rip that. Design. We'll get into how I think of and feel about design in a little bit. But design objectively definitely not as good as Black Dogs. And he tried to tell stories with multiple parts. He wanted to have things with like a big overarching plot that led to the aha, so this is leading to that moment and that happens in Island of Corpses, Mangled. Pretty much all of his stories are kind of like that. And it's kind of hard to explain without explaining his channel as a whole, which is literally the reason why I narrowed this down to just these three. But bottom line, this is everything I like about his stories put into one story and perfected, and I think it's great. Black Dogs follows a boy named, who thinks he is named John Matthews in the beginning of the story. His real name is L. Dahmer, but that's a whole other thing. And he's working as a, I, I don't know how to, like a host for this hotel that his aunt owns in Nebraska. And it, he's just living his life, things are going normal, until the governor's daughter, Hayes Borden, starts messing with him. She meets him on this campaign trail, realizes how awkward he is, and just starts, like, messing with him and, like, saying these little things to joke with him. He's like, okay, haha, sure, whatever, I'm awkward, please fuck off. But then, the more it goes on, the more you start to realize she's trying to get something out of doing this. It's not just talking to him because she thinks it's funny to mess with him. There's a reason, there's something she's trying to get out of him, but he's not sure what. And it goes on, and the things she says to him and does with him just get weirder and weirder. The, like, there's literally a part where she just slams his hand against a wall for no reason. She does this weird ballerina dance in front of you, and she's like, what does that mean to you? And he's like, I don't know. And then, plot twist, plot twist number one of many in this story, there's a time loop. The main character is completely oblivious to the time loop. Hayes seems to know it exists, and you're like, okay, so she's trying to get him out of the time loop. But the first thing she says to him the next day is, space, not time. And he's like, what does that mean? And then he falls back into the loop and just starts saying the same things he said yesterday and forgets she said that. What's really happening is this thing, you can see the bit of its mouth on here, is called a Styx Hound. It's a paranormal entity that took over the entire manor and the surrounding area and all the people in it and it's using them to fulfill this loop to make sure that none of them escape from the loop so 
it's really confusing to explain long story short it's basically has them in a time loop and it's monitoring them to see if they break the loop Hayes is trying to get the main character out of the loop without the hound noticing eventually the hound does notice and there's so much other stuff with this story like why the hound got there like how it's there the main character's grandfather and his significance this research facility that's uh like monitoring the hound so much stuff I love this story, could talk about it for ages, but we got other ones to talk about. Like this, my favorite one, Design. Now, if I'm being realistic, Design goes here. But, I like it too much to put it here, I'm putting it here. Nah, fuck y'all, okay. <laughs> let, let the record show, objectively, I'd put Design here. All parts of Design, because the beginning of Design is kind of trash, but... I like it this much. And design is about these high school students, or they're seniors in high school, just graduated, and they try to go on a final night out with the boys and girls and have a fun trip. So they live in a kind of remote place in, I think, Arizona, and there's a ghost town at the edge of their regular town. They're like, okay, let's just go there and explore, like, camp out. It'll be fun. Trust us. They go there, and... It's private property, but they don't really care. They're like, bro, who cares? It's a fucking ghost town. What are they going to do with it? And then they start realizing weird things. Like, one, they have a generator that's completely surrounded by an electric fence in this ghost town. Two, there's multiple security cameras all over the place that are in, like, pristine condition. And they don't know why, because, like, what would you have in a ghost town? that's so important that you need this for besides the generator of course but what is that generator providing power to it, there's not enough security cameras and they're high tech but they're definitely not high enough tech to need something that big and then all the power goes out and the generator stops and it turns out that underneath this ghost town there's a secret facility for these creatures called left hands what are left hands? They're these parasites that infect young girls and kill their mind, take the host body, and basically give them superpowers, but it takes over your mind and body, and it wants to kill all humans. And the one that escapes causes the power to go out, and its name is Callie. And Callie is just going crazy, like ripping all these soldiers to shreds, and she runs away. But, coincidentally, she looks like one of John's friends. So, the people come out, they immediately see Sarah standing there, John's friend, they're like, oh fuck, there she is, and they just gun her down in front of him. It's super horrifying. John finds the creature and, like, freaks out and starts attacking it, but Callie realizes she that he physically can't hurt her because of how weak he is compared to her, and he's not one of the guards, and she's just like, why are you doing this, what the fuck, man? And so, the rest of the story is about their tenuous relationship after Callie inadvertently got all of John's friends killed and John is now a fugitive from the government and I think it's really good there's some things wrong with it like they, they try to well not they Liam tries to push a weird romance between John and Callie in season two that doesn't really make sense because Callie got all of his friends killed and he literally hated her for it and that was the whole driving force of season one uh some of the left hands can teleport but the way they teleport doesn't make sense with certain things there's flaws, but overall, I love this story so much that I can't help but put it here. Final one, Puppet Game. I hate this story. I wouldn't say it's trash, but I, I genuinely hate it. The reason why I hate it has less to do with the story itself, and more because, remember how I was talking about how Liam has multiple different uh, ongoing stories in, like, multiple parts? Design is in three seasons, unfinished. Yellow Halogen was supposed to be two seasons, but was unfinished. Yeah. Basically, he has a... Let's go back to here. Wait, what the fuck is this? Get out of here. He's got this video. This is his final goodbye video, talking about him shutting down the channel and moving on with his career, focusing on his animation channel. Go check it out, Liam Vickers Animation, right, right there. Or Glitch Productions, he's also on that. But anyways, in this video, he mentions how the stories that are told in parts 
if they're not already finished, this is the only one that's already finished, they're going to be discontinued, which is really sad. And I'm like, oh man, that sucks. Here's my problem. I never liked this story. This is literally just like fan service the story. I see why people like it. It's literally he just takes a bunch of characters and monsters from all of his other stories and like mashes them together in this weird like total drama island scenario. I get what it's supposed to do. I get that it's not meant to be taken seriously, but I it's not my cup of tea. My problem is he gave this story, a fucking puppet game, an actual ending in this video. He fully explained, yeah, this is was my plan for how it was supposed to end. It was either going to be this way or this way. And I'm like, oh, okay, so you're going to give puppet game a real ending. That's fine. What would have happened at the end of design? Because I've been waiting three years for that, man. He's like, yeah, design would have been a happy ending. That's all I'm saying. And I'm like, what? That's it? Liam Vickers betrayed us! So, yeah, I was mad as hell about that one. And I'm like, well, uh, tell me what happens in Yellow Halogen, at least. I'd be fine just to hear, will it be happy or not for Yellow Halogen? Because this was like six years ago at this point. Didn't even mention Yellow Halogen. I was fuming, man. This, this bullshit got a real ending, and design didn't... Admittedly, design would probably be here, but Puppet Game... Puppet Game is below this. If... I could choose and wasn't doing this based on like opinions at all. But anyways, yeah, bottom line, I don't like Puppet Game. It's just fan service a story. You'd only ever like it if you literally listened to all of his stories from the beginning. Like back when I listened to them and then got into Puppet Game. And I did that and I don't even like Puppet Game. It should have been design that got the actual ending. But anyways, before I keep rambling about Puppet Game and design, and all these other things. I'm gonna end this video, cause it's been a very long time, I'm very tired, and I got- I said all I need to be said. This is the tier list, masterpieces, greats, goods, averages, weird jokes that I still love, Sonic EXE, wish I could put you here man, sadly not. Jeff the Killer, wish I could put you here man, off, off the fucking screen, sadly not. Anyways, tune in next time for... I, I don't even know if I'm going to keep making videos after this or what I'm going to make. But if I do, tune in. <laughs>